Hello and welcome to the Nash Tackle Off The Hook podcast. Just to make you aware, this podcast may contain some explicit slash offensive language. And if that's not your thing, you don't have to listen. But I have given you a warning. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. You don't know the half of it, but yeah, um, I'm anyway. Time, yeah, I'm, good, on, mate. I'm skating on the thinnest <laughs> ice known to man. Like. He said, and um, they put a poison in the tank that just instantly kills them. He went, and we've run out of it, so we cut their heads off with shovels. Suddenly, bang! The whole boat exploded. Take your sort of eight-inch-long piranha and imagine that at four, five, maybe six feet. I said, I've revived your dead fish. <laughs> F off, he said. You haven't. That was just humongous. It was... I couldn't believe what I was looking at. I'm just battling this fish out and on. I know it's a black man. I'm, yeah. I'm saying I'll never be a naughty boy again. If you catch fish and you return them to the water, then you are my brother. Dan Yeomans, Henry Lennon. He's bloody back again. They're back again, boys. Welcome to the podcast. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank yeah, you, I'm mate. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. You're all right. You're all right. No, heartbroken. Do you, need, do you need another coffee? Oh, I'd love another coffee. Perk you up a bit. He's right. heartbroken though. Really. Um, yeah, we've right. just been talking about it. Yeah, Henry's Henry's been heartbroken about my uh, unsuccessful love life. Tough New Year's, wasn't it, mate? Tough New Year's. Didn't you say she would probably listen to this? Yeah, she might not know who she is. <laughs> All right, <laughs> don't say her name. He's but, got that many uh, on the go, mate. Yeah. That many failed attempts. But yeah, other than that, I'm alright, Hassan. What else have you been up to? It's been a sort of a New Year's Eve period, mate. Any fishing? Loads of work. Partying? What's been going on, boys? Um, I actually took, basically I did nothing work-wise over Christmas, which was like the first time in a long time, because I left my laptop at work, which was nice. Tactical. My girlfriend said to me on the last day back, she goes, I'm, you, I cannot believe you've just, you've absolutely done nothing, which is actually quite nice. I should have done it more often when I'm on holiday. Um, uh, did a bit of fishing. Ooh, what'd you but, go, piking? Um, piking, perching, but I always, I just got so distracted with catching live baits. I just really enjoyed it. I was like, okay, I've got loads now, but I'm going to carry on because it's fun. And then I'd go for like an hour's pike fishing and then put them all back. Fair play. Whatever floats your boat, mate. Yeah, it was good. It was good getting into a bit of uh, other other sorts of fishing apart from carp fishing because I've never done it. I've never been like an avid course angler. Yeah. But maybe it's my age. I remember you telling me about four months ago. I'm just doing carp this winter. I know, I Only carp. I couldn't get a ticket anywhere. I couldn't get a winter ticket, which would like I knew would I'd be motivated to go to regularly. Yeah, I need something close to our home with you know a good stock of fish, but mainly a fish in there which is going to keep me driving to go. And I, I just never found it. Completed it now, hasn't he? He's done it, yeah. The old twaves, he's it. done it. Done. That uh, pod went well. I've had loads of good feedback. It was a good podcast. People right? liked it. I did actually like Even it. Even him. Even he, I said I liked you, it. That, you you that, admitted on a story. <laughs> that's rare. That love and respect for you, Dan. Even, well, yeah, I can see that sometimes. He might be playing up for the cameras. But the, the one that got me was he texted me going, I've just finished your podcast. Oh, my God. It was amazing. Loved it. And I was like, the joke. You're winding me up. Yeah. Where, where is it? Or And he was just going to come in with something else, but he really liked it, so thanks, mate. It. And then I sent you a picture of me. Um, this is a question for the viewers. Yeah. Then I sent him a picture, because Dan reckons, go on, you explain it better than me. What the football this? fans are out there, guys who play football regularly, I looked at Henry and I took the piss out of him the other day. I go, I bet you're the sort of person who plays five a side with boots and trainer socks. And he goes, yeah, yeah. yeah I do. Yeah, yeah. And it just told me everything I need to know. Yeah. I don't get why that's weird. I told, I randomly, I just texted my brother. He plays a lot of football. He's a football coach. And I just said, scenario, 5-0. Yeah. Henry plays with boots and no socks. And he just said, I think he just said, um, fine, each to their own, but he'd be my last pick in the playground. Yeah. <laughs> just from the look of him. He's rugby, isn't I, he? Yeah, it... it it's just a rugby man playing. For- I honestly didn't think there's anything weird about it. And then he sent me a video. <laughs> that is rogue. People man. rinse me. I always wear white socks. So Blair and all that was like, oh, white socks. You look like an idiot. But I always have because it's just sport. It's, I've always been sporty. Yeah, it's just yeah. a sports thing. And if I'm playing five, I always wear like sports socks. Not nose socks. You look like you've just you look like you're hung <laughs> no, over. No, no, no I've got socks. socks. I've got the, like these ones on. Ankle socks. For the viewers. <laughs> 
Ankle socks. <laughs> but it looks Trainer like, line, yeah, yeah, it looks like you got no socks on. It's That's the same. Weird, with, man. No. I put it in the same thing. If you listen to the Peter Crouch podcast, I put it in the same thing as wearing shin pads at No, five it's eight. not that oh bad. Oh my God. It's no way near as bad as that. It could be worse. No. Mate, a bare shin just. Addressed to no, mate, that's it's not weird. right. I just thought it was weird, so a little ankle coverage or mm. something, but I will let you off, mate. That's all right, yeah. Still, I, I was gonna say, still win every week. I don't <laughs> barely win, it's not even competitive, <laughs> it's not competitive, it's just a kickabout. I'm I, pretty I, sure I take it so seriously. You take, I remember you exiting a podcast meeting early and saying, Got five aside, I'm <laughs> off. Like that, he's gone, mate. Well, I live for Wednesdays, honestly. <laughs> yeah, for the first few weeks he started doing it, I thought he was in a proper five aside league. You know, some of them get real heated. I used to play in mm. a few, which, like, they're proper serious. Then he thought, I'll find out. Oh, no, it's not competitive. There's no referee. It's just a kickabout amongst the people it's who live. It's organised by, like, the, let, the, the letting agents I live at. They they own loads of the apartment buildings, so they just organise. It's literally a kickabout. I thought it was like a power league or something. That's what I thought. I, no, thought was... I got invited to the power league after based off good performances. Well, and then they saw your foot. I got scouted. <laughs> he turns up and goes, oh, God. <laughs> Stick him at the... You can go in goal, mate. <laughs> I've been in goal a few times. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> Apart from the no socks sort of football and the heartbreak, mate. Christmas time, New Year's period, mate. What have you been up to? You um, fishing? You must have been fishing. I barely did any fishing. I went. I wanted to go a couple of times. I've been a little bit of pike fishing, but not really caught anything. But since I got back from um, fishing with Jim in France, I've really not done. I've yeah. done the odd night, but I've just really not. Same with Dan, really. I've not got stuck into anywhere. I'm going this weekend. I've got like a little weekend adventure planned to kickstart the year for fishing. Um, nice. But then that, I've just been, uh, I've been going out quite a bit, like catching up with my mates where I've been away so much this year. Yeah. You know. Fair play. Chatting to girls. Getting your heart broken. <laughs> getting my heart broken. <laughs> chatting to more girls, getting my heart broken again. <laughs> getting ignored. The it's lo- great. The, <laughs> you got to love it. The law of averages. It's the same as your fishing. If you go enough, if you throw enough shit, something will stick. <laughs> that bigger will slip up eventually, mate. Don't you worry. Oh, fingers crossed. <laughs> We're not here to talk about Christmas time, what you've been up to, and your pending <coughs> fail of a love life. We are going to talk about Continental Connections, a new series. Mm-hmm. First of all, before we get into sort of the episode, because the episode's out now, you can watch it on Nash TV. Go and watch it if you haven't already. Talk to me about the concept of the series, because I believe it was your concept or your series, Mr. Lennon. Is it, that right? It was. Um, it yeah. is. It is. Your, yeah. It's not it was. It is your series. Um, it? it started. Hopefully it's still going. Yeah, yeah. Well, please, yeah. If anyone watches, please watch and leave nice comments because otherwise we're getting it axed. <laughs> so, so many nice feedback so that we do more. <laughs> um, that's, that's so true. If it doesn't go well, you probably won't see any more. No, we've shot we two. Shot, we shot two. Oh, you'll see two. But it might end yeah, there. Yeah. If so, please be really nice because it's so fun to go away for a week to a cool country yeah. going fishing. This so. is it, right? Basically, it's just funding your your sort of yeah. addiction to go yeah. out to another country to go kart fishing, isn't it? Yeah. Well. My viewpoint is right. Let's do it for the brand. You know, this is you know, it's essentially my job. Yeah. Henry's like. I want to go here fishing. Let's bring cameras so you pay for me. <laughs> will you pay for me to... Yes, you will. Brilliant. So, yeah. so that was we... the mindset I was in when Dan asked me two years ago, we need to come up with some new film ideas. Have you got any? And um, What do I want what to do? What do I want to do? <laughs> for me. And what can I get work to pay for? Um, no, it, it did come from a little bit of a... Um, obviously, I grew up watching Eurobanks. absolutely loved Eurobanks. And I think everyone... A lot of people would say it's their favourite carp fishing series, the, the Eurobank series. So yeah. it was very much based off of that. But sometimes you get the feedback on the Eurobanks films that obviously they're tazzing around too too much. Maybe they're not staying in one place long enough. That was the, like the only sort of negative you, you would get on the um, on the in the comments. That was the only thing that people would say sometimes. I was thinking, oh, how can we play on that? Um, and with the job that I do at Nash, I speak to quite a lot of the Europeans on quite a regular basis and you build a bit of a relationship with them. And then from there, basically, it just just kind of, the, the idea spawned in my brain. And uh, yeah, the idea was to go over, fish with just one person in from that European territory for sort of six, seven, eight days. Mm. Fish, three venues we're sort of aiming at for each one, aren't we? So, sort of two, all very different. Two smaller ones where you're there for a day to two, three days, and then finish on a on a really big one where you hopefully catch something really special. Um, and yeah, put it to Dan, thinking he'd go, no shit, but he liked it. And the, here I we think are. The main thing was to to basically showcase typical fishing yeah. from that country with an expert of 
mm. that country. Yeah. So as we all know, it's quite easy just to think European fishing is European fishing, English mm. fishing is English, but every single country in Europe has its own, has its own mm. unique, yeah. not even style of fishing, but the venues or, you know, the style, the venues and the tactics, everything's quite unique and it's all viewed differently. I get sucked into it personally by just going, that's European style. Yeah, 100%. It, there's so many different types. So Henry was saying, it'd be good to go and meet up with one guy who's an ex expert of that country or someone who's really, really well tuned with the scene and fish three different types, which we, especially if we don't have that in the UK, it's all well and good going to somewhere. For example, you, you end up going to France and you don't really want to go to a park lake because yeah. there's loads of park lakes. It's been documented loads in England, especially from Nash. So it was about going and finding out typical fishing and that that person's fishing. So. So the first one was the first one. Obviously, episode one is Italy. Mm -hmm. Was it always going to be Italy? What was the the sort of no, choice? No, it was going to be was it Spain? Spain first. We wanted to go Spain first, just because of the time of year. Yeah. So we had that uh, late March mm. period booked, and so we're thinking, oh, Spain will be bang on. And then <clears throat> what? I don't even remember what happened. But we gave some dates to Samir, and then Samir said the whole of March I can't do because he wanted to catch thirty kilo. Yeah, because he, he, that's when Arulana fishes its best, uh, okay. and so I think he was dedicating all to fish Arulana. And we didn't want to go Arulana because we done. we've yeah. done an Arulana film. We wanted yeah, yeah. to go somewhere different. So, so then we were really scratching around, weren't we, trying to figure out where to go because it was like the twentieth of March to the thirtieth of March. You're like, wow, well, it's hit and miss. You need to go somewhere really far south, and I don't know what the other option was. We Lolo, at, Lolo, Lolo, yeah, Lolo, Lolo. That was it. France. We were going to go south of France with Lolo, yeah. hopefully, but he. Was well, doing a big filming project in Oalana. He's going over to fish Oalana as well, so we couldn't go with him. And then we put it out. I remember was having like just we basically got a map up, didn't we? And we're just like <laughs> pointing, going too cold, too cold, too cold. I think we do we get somewhere in the Balkans. We we're looking at Croatia, going maybe Croatia, but it's mm. a long drive. And then we're like, well, Italy. I think Italy's the only one. Yeah. And so we put some feelers out across to a couple of people, but March. No, you say March is. I've hit a mess. Yeah, definitely. It can be. Because also, when you're booking it in January, I've had really good marches, mm. where like the end of March is actually really, really spring-like. You know, yeah. the temperatures are up already, um, and you're flying towards that spring period. But I've had marches, I've had Aprils where it's snowing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it can go either way. But when you've got to book it in, book all the videographers, book the travel and everything, it's kind of, once you make that decision, you go in. Mm. Or think, you're losing money. And I think we couldn't work around it either, could we? Because there was so... Last year was such a busy filming time that we kind of booked everything in and it was either that or nothing. There wasn't mm. like, oh, we'll just move it to April because everyone was flat out in April. So it was so, like that or you just don't do the first episode. On that shoot, you're not, and this is, I mean, you've got loads of different shoots. As you say, you, you filmed a lot and we've talked about it in the previous podcast. You filmed a lot over like a congested period of time, like if you like March onwards mm. for a fair bit and left the winter. But you're not picking those shoots around like moon phases or anything like that, are you? You're just putting them in because the diary's that busy? Uh, Some, sometimes we are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, depending on... The like for example this year we've got a couple of venues booked where I could have booked it beginning of the month or end of the month and I look at the moon phase and I was like well did you yeah oh. like especially that, that looks like I won't shit. say don't anyway. blow it. it it might be but if you've got the option why not because you can't predict the weather because but... I can't pick the weather so yeah. I might as well like yeah there might not be anything in it but might as well if I can I might listen as well. to the debate podcast to find out everyone's opinion uh, on the moon phase uh. um, so yeah sometimes we do yeah sometimes we do but. Basically, we'll be out anyway. Yeah. Because we were so busy, we were going to be out anyway on a moon phase on some shoot of some sort. You talked about videographers and sort of, yeah, prep and sort of mm. how things work logistically. Who was on the shoot? Who was actually filming behind the cameras, etc.? Um, we had Brad Tone, Curly Photography, and we had Bastel. And it was like Bastel was on the edit, which obviously after everyone's seen Oilana, you were like, yes, come on. You could make this Because we didn't even have to catch fish because Bastel would still make it cool. <laughs> yeah. The pressure was off. He'd make yeah. it cool. Um, yeah, it, originally it was going to be Mike Tobin instead oh, yeah, of was, Tony. Yeah, yeah. But um, he's all yes. conspiracy theory about the jabs and oh, that. Oh, yeah. And so, <laughs> so, he did, so he didn't get his jabs, which, you know, each to their own. We're never going to force someone to do it. But he had to stay at home because yeah, it was still in the period where he needed a couple of jabs or proof or whatever. So, Mike out, tone in. Unlucky. Uh, 
And then the choice around Prob- Italy. So prob- it- probably a blessing in disguise for him in the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you looked out there, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> he knew what he was doing. In terms of organisation of actually where you're going, venues, you said there you wanted the concept of the piece to be around different venues. And obviously in the video, you flip between a small venue to an absolute monster venue and everything in between. The, the fix or the person that you had out there as your connection... How did you go about sussing out venues? How did you find them? How did the sort of logistics of planning it all play out? Because you didn't just rock up to Italy and go... No, so we we spoke to... Yeah, so first thing first was choosing our connection. Yeah, mm. so we spoke to... First we spoke to Matteo, because he's the one we speak to most in Italy. And then Matteo yep. put us <clears throat> in with Richard, who is the videographer for Nash Italy. Uh, speaks very, very good English, very good angler. So it's like, okay, perfect. He's got all connections up in the north and central Italy. So he put over a list of his about 10, 12 venues, something like that. Yeah, really good list of venues and with screenshots and photos of the stock and a bit what, of information. We thought on we'd cast, cast yeah. as well, which was important. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, so that was, so, so me and Dan sort of sat down, looked at it. I don't think, I think we picked three we wanted to do and I don't think we did any of them to start with did we we kept picking them and then we'd get feedback from him mm. and then it kind of it kind of like knocked a few venues out like oh we can't do this one because you've got to pick a swim and stay in that swim uh. and then it's like wow well, again like Dan said earlier it's March they could be in the deep water or they could be in a foot of water in the shallows like depending on what the weather is so you don't really want to be confined to to one swim so that knocked a few venues off and then um, and we also tried not to pick any which was like too big and deep because obviously it's March. You don't want. You, it'd be nice to have somewhere where you could. Was that was that one of the? Don't pick anywhere too big and deep. To, to, to start with, that's what we went with. I was yeah. going to say so you the biggest, your, final, the <laughs> your final venue is pretty big and deep. Yeah. So that's originally we were like, oh no, that one's. I get up on the map. Went that Bolsena's massive, isn't it? Yeah. Not doing. Not that. doing that one. Yeah. That ended up being one of them. Um, and then we wanted them all to be different as well. We didn't want it to be like the same. Type you go of fishing, to three yeah, different, yeah. very similar venues. You yeah, want an three, all to be a little bit different. So didn't want to go to like three big public lakes where you're boat fishing yeah. at range in the day. De- like you might as well stay at the the one. Right? Yeah. It doesn't really showcase that range of Italian fishing what it's got to offer. So, um, yeah, I think it was just a few Skype calls, a few us making our decision. Richard Skype. giving more God, Skype. I remember Skype. Skype. Yeah. Skype. What was it? Skype. Skype. Yeah. <laughs> Zoom. Yeah. Skype. Where does that come from? I don't know. Oh, I'm all over the place at the minute. Heartbroken. Um, <laughs> I don't know where I'm at. How fix, when was that all fixed then? Was, was it quite flexible up until the date, finding out how places were fishing? It was quite a late one because of, um, because of the swapping of the dates, wasn't it? I think it was probably around this time we were still figuring out where we were going to go. Right, and wow. So, yeah, six weeks out, seven weeks out, we still really didn't know what we were, mm. what we were doing. Um, yeah, and then it was the, once you picked them as well, then you kind of forget about it. It's like, oh, it's all sorted. You kind of forget <laughs> about it for a while. And then all of a sudden it's two, three days before you go. And you're like, oh my God, I need to get three different setups sorted. Well, six, because obviously there's two of us. We had a whole yeah, range so, of... So that, I, I, I personally, I thought, of, I thought about that a bit sooner than three days before. Did you only... Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> three days before. Well, yeah. That's how I roll, Hassan. <laughs> on the edge, mate. Well... Yeah, <laughs> the thing as well was because I do have like European setups. You could tell as well from his all prep. over the place. Um, I do have European setups, but where we'd had a load of new products arrive, obviously you want to swap out and use all the new Nash yeah. boats and all the new Nash engine and uh, the new LR reels. And so that really was three days. We're like, oh my god, I've got to spool up eight reels and I've got to figure out how to use this, like pump this boat up and use this echo. And yeah, so I was a bit. Just all over the place. Pop a pump in and press. <laughs> figure out how to pump this boat up. <laughs> Took me hours. <laughs> well, actually, no, because I've got this different locking mechanism on the one I've used before. And when me and Brad went to... Uh, it's because the one you've used before is a kayak which <laughs> deflates as you paddle. Me and Brad, we didn't fig- couldn't figure out how to use it, so we just went half-pumped over at Bled moving all that stuff over and Brilliant. it was like proper like a sandwich disclaimer do not do <laughs> anything do that this. henry ever does in his fishing ever <laughs> don't listen to him on these podcasts um but in, in terms of actually what you took so you said there you're both traveling together you've got to take tackle to cover all those eventualities mm. you've got a boat in there the new boat I think we had French. three boats didn't we did you have three boats what'd yeah. you take nah, did we? Well. yeah we well, did we, we took all three we did we took all three because of the different venues yeah. 
and the videographers. There's a lot of lads there. Yeah, they there need is. their own boat as well. Because yeah, yeah. for the first venue, we, we both wanted a small one, so we put the 180s, 240s for that. And then for the for Bolsena, which is the big one we finished on, you need the 320 to tow your gear around with you. But then also you don't want to take a 320 out, so you need a 240 again. So you have to bring all Yeah, all and three. It's, you know, there was four crew members and then two of us. So that's not just a couple of lads and their fishing stuff. That's mm. seven bed chairs, seven bivvies, mm. yeah. seven cloves bags, like seven, four sets of camera kit. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's actually quite a lot. It's a so, ball lake. Yeah. That's the biggest it's, ball it, lake about them trips. Yeah, it's so say, annoying yeah. when work pay for a trip that you've managed to... That's what I was about to and say. And you have to pack yeah. your own van and oh. stuff that's not pay, <laughs> that you don't pay for. <laughs> don't, get, don't get me onto the pack in the vans, mate. <laughs> actually, oh, talk, yeah. talking about football... That's why you went. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was. Yeah, yeah. Um, I let the day before we were supposed to pack. I wanted to go play football, so I left work. We'd been there at work. I left work to get back to Stratford for six to play football, then come back again. By which point, the <laughs> van, the vans, including all of his stuff, packed, loaded. Don't worry about Played Henry. I'll blinder, do it. Though. I scored seven that game. I remember. Did you? Yeah, in that <laughs> non-competitive <laughs> competitive league. It was only. It was five v four that night. So. <laughs> What but yeah, we're leaving cool. on the Thursday, Wednesday night football. He's just left and I've just packed all the stuff. And this is where I, I got you good on the when you got back to the office. Yeah, you, you lost head your red. What'd you get him with? Because he just basically closed his eyes, grabbed <laughs> all the tackle he owns and just dumped it by the van. I'm picking up a... like empty bucket, another empty bucket, <laughs> another. I'm like, why because don't you like the stack way them st- and then put stuff in it? You know? No, because the way I would... I know exactly what you're talking about for that one. I had an empty bucket, which I was going to put at the back of the van. Right. If I was going by myself, that's what I'd do. So that when I get to a venue, I'd be like, okay, this is the base mix I need to make. I'm not just going to make up a random base mix, like a boiling mix for no reason. So you'd have an empty like... bucket at the back. But, you're, so but space is a premium here, isn't it? <laughs> this is what I was going to go into. Sure, it makes sense when you're going away and you're right. Yeah. Space was a premium. His barrow... That was is... your problem. I was at football. Exactly, <laughs> which was my point. His barrow had been looked like it had been loaded by Stevie Wonder. Like it was just, or like, let's put a barrow there and let's play pin the tail on the barrow and just throw fishing tackle at it and see what, like, see what balance is. And then Dan popped that in the van for me. I'm like, oh, I've got to get seven bed chairs in, three boats, all the bait, all the food and what. And he was just like, I'm going to football, see you later. So. <laughs> I got back and basically I just rinsed him and you lost your head, didn't you? Yeah, you weren't doing my head in. Yeah. I was all riled up from football. Another <laughs> another one. <laughs> it's fair to say, and this is something that comes across, especially watching the video, your relationship as two work colleagues and friends is quite... Toes the line in when yeah. you say colleagues, I think. <laughs> yeah. well, if, you know... if any one colleague treated their other <laughs> yeah. colleague how we treat each other, there'd be a lot of HR involved. Yeah, I was going to say... Well, there wouldn't we, be colleagues if, for long, would there? If, we worked, you know if I mean? we worked at a um, proper company that had, like, a corp... <laughs> sorry, a corporate company. <laughs> a proper company. A really corporate company with a real HR. <laughs> Not some editing on this We'd pod. been sacked ages ago. We do have a real HR, but we just hide our yeah, emotional... Yeah, yeah. Bonding yeah. connection. You sort of hide your emotional it. connection with your anonce and use hormones. <laughs> <laughs> that tends to be. That's, or a winder, but good. You've lost your kit bag or you've lost your camera bag. I've seen a few of them on the old the Insta camera story. Bag, yeah, yeah. But it was just like the podcast chat the other night, wasn't it? Sunday <laughs> night. When, we, when I was just, just messaging you about, oh, do you think maybe oh, you want to do a live, a live podcast at... Um, <laughs> Northern Carpshire, and it just descended and into he'd, he'll just make your a, mum. Yeah, he'll just make a remark at me, and I can't back down to <laughs> yeah. that. So I make a remark back, and then we end up just going at each other. And I, I find myself, what am I doing? What <laughs> am I doing? Though, can't like, not bite. But I, I just, just try and be funny. And <laughs> me and Al said the same <sighs> thing when we came in. It was like, that chat was too much. I was like, yeah, we just let it go for a few digs, yeah. and then go back to the relevant message that was at the start, and then reply to it. Yeah, <laughs> it was good fun. Do you know what? Genuinely, one of my New Year's resolutions was like, just settle down a bit, Dan. Just leave him alone a bit. Stop getting into. No, I don't do that. That's boring. Yeah, I know, but like, you love it, you too. I mean, it's not very productive at times. Sometimes you just need to concentrate on the job at task and not just. Like when he got back from football to load the van, I should have just let him crack on. We'd be yeah. done. But we just argue for like an hour. just, And then it puts him in a mood. And then suddenly, me starting it, it'll put me in a mood because we're going at each other. Do you know what I mean? Like, remember that time about the Belgium one? We we, the, we did Belgium trips as well. That was bad. I think that's the, the, the biggest argument we had. We started like just bantering, bantering, bantering. 
Before I know it, we're literally just going at each other oh, across the office. What are we going? about? I don't know. Uh, remember. Can't, Something <laughs> about like you're whether, right, I'm wrong, I'm right, you're wrong. Whether we should have gone out on a boat or not, and it like it got really heated, like proper yelling at each other. I remember Barn just sat in the middle because he came down to do editing because he, he he found it more productive to edit in the office than at home because he couldn't stay on track. <laughs> I remember him just like f- ten minutes into this argument that lasted about forty five minutes, <laughs> he just takes his he just took his headphones off and just sits there and just looks. Between me and like Dan, like a, like a tennis match, <laughs> as we go back, and we were like really. I remember at the end, I had to go for a walk around the around the office lake. So just like oh, fucking Dan, he thinks he fucking knows everything. That's that's what it comes down to. He's a massive dick swinger. Yeah, he just he massive dick swinger. <laughs> All he, he just wants to be. I am the big. I am. He chucks it. I'm the best. Compared da, da, da. to you, definitely. And so stuff like that. So it's always about trying to get one up one on each up, other yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's more one-sided like he has to try and beat me and everything and so then i just reply to him because i know it winds him up it escalates <laughs> anyway where were we we yeah. loaded the vans what we, a, we argued what a base to a friendship yeah. one of many arguments over the next 10 days i quite yeah. like it it's fun yeah it is it is good because also like that one was bad where he had to go but like at the end of it we were like that got out of hand didn't it we, yeah. it's never I'm sure we didn't remember what the argument was about why were we like, the next day what the fuck were we even talking about he just had to beat me he just had to beat me but also what i quite like is like your polar opposites in terms of fishing as well like and that plays out well especially Bolsina at the end when you went off but like that plays out as well with regards to all that so you get quite a nice little a bit of banter in between you two fishing completely differently and having sort of different thoughts around moon phases is another one that's come up in this podcast again but I quite like how that plays out and you take the mickey but essentially I like it it's a humorous slash slightly loaded conversation <laughs> all the time with you two which is pretty good yeah. after packing setup wise what did you take? So you said you took three three different setups, did you? Well, mm. I was a bit conscious because, in all honesty, I've only just really started going in front of a camera. It's one of the first mm. shoots where it's actually just me and Henry. Pressure's on us, you know. We're not big names like Alan or Ollie, and you know, to to invest this much into a shoot with us two, I did feel a little bit of pressure into. I've said before that where I haven't in front of the camera, but this one I did. I definitely, yeah. I just didn't want to mess up, make any schoolboy errors in terms of like forgot an engine or forgot the batteries. Or So I went to Al and said, Al, big Euro trips. You've done a lot of them. Mm. Um, give me a tick list. What, what do I need to take? Have I got everything? So I thought I was pretty, pretty on it. First thing he said, this is classic. Have you got your bait droppers? <laughs> We're going to Bowl Sana and he yeah. said he's that's the first thing on the list. Which just made me shit my pants because I was like, if if the first thing he's saying is bait droppers, what is that list gonna look uh, it, like? That, that's the thing that made you shit your pants because I just like as soon as he said that, I was like, it's just Alan being extra again. And just like I'm not listening to this conversation anymore. That's what the first guy I thought I was like, it's just Alan being extra. Bait droppers. And that's the first thing he said. I was just like, okay, he's just trying to find something to And he said something like, two pairs of waterproofs? Why two? Because one gets wet. I get that. But why? What, in case they get wet? Yeah. But they're waterproof, so... Well, if you fall in, they're wet on the inside. I wasn't going to fall in. <laughs> if anyone's going to fall in, it's going to be you. I fall in, in in Germany, not in Italy. <laughs> right. Episode two. Yeah. And, and, spoiler and, alert. And the self-inflated car. <laughs> right, this is a little side story. Yeah, I f- I fell in. I'll go have a cup I'll see you in yeah. a bit. Yeah, I've had a Belgian bum. In, in Germany, well, I, I, first of all, I nearly drowned trying to swim my rigs out, and then I came back oh. that oh, I'll probably use the boat. Again, again disclaimers, <laughs> disclaimers. Yeah, no. Do then, not take any influence off Henry. And the margin was like, um, just like loads of big stones that would like sort of fall away, and I got off the boat, stepped on, and then the God. margin would just sort of go in. But it, but it was only like up to your waist, so I just sort of fell back a little bit. And as I'm just laying there, like oh, I was like, oh, I've got wet. And all of a sudden, like two seconds of delayed reaction. I've gotten wet. <laughs> the uh, self inflated kayak just goes. Poosh. So I'm just lying there. Kayak? You mean your life jacket? Uh, life jacket. I was yeah. going to say, so you I got, got too excited there. Too self- many things going through. It, I was wearing a kayak. <laughs> Tucked into a life jacket. It's amazing. So I'm just laying there in about four foot of water with just this self inflating life jacket mm. around my face. So yeah. Um, why did I tell that story? Safety first, kids. Where did that story come from? As an insight into that? the world of Henry Lennon. Yeah. <laughs> um, waterproofs. I don't, I don't take two pairs of waterproof with me. 
I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Someone else. He's take gone, over. mate. He is gone. That co- what is in that coffee? <laughs> yeah, um, basically, there's a long list of stuff that you had to pack. But in terms of tackle hardware, rods, reels. Yeah. So I was, was a bit. Uh, yeah, I was a bit nervous on that. But to to be honest, it wasn't too bad. No. The only extra thing really um, is in terms of your actual setup. I'd just say it's mono snag leader, quite essential in Europe. Mm. Heavy braid, essential in Europe. Well, that's where because we are doing the different venues. I think I brought like a English setup and then with a big water setup and then I brought some stalking rods as well. Mm. So I, I what, think I brought quite a few. What I mean is I took my what it, you class as your English setup but there wasn't that much more you have to add to that to be kitted out out there. Like okay. I wouldn't take reels of mono snag leader with me. The braid I stepped up for my main line um, and then it's just by echo sounder, batteries, engine, then there's all the other stuff like extra cloves and whatnot. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Little bits like H blocks and bigger leads, stuff like that. But it's not a lot. The know. list ain't that big. For and some if reason, you Italy felt really, I f- for that, out of all the ones I did last year, that felt the one where you had to bring the most. Maybe it's because we had such a big crew with us. Big crew. And also, there was three different, very yeah. different venues where, like, like I say, we, had to, we needed different boats for the first one than we did the last one. Yeah. So then. Yeah. Boat wise, I get that. Rods and reel wise, obviously the first one's the first venue is quite intimate. I mean, you are using a boat, but it's not long distance. Yeah, boat work, regardless, like you, again, it really, that, it's not you're not casting, are you? That is one. So, like, I when I went to Bled, I took, I said in the podcast, I took twelve foot rods because yeah. I didn't want to be undergunned in any situation. I thought whatever a nine foot or ten foot rod can do, I can do with a twelve foot. But if I do need to cast further. Um, yes, they're not quite as mobile for the travelling around, but I'd rather sacrifice that to be able to get further. Yeah. So I, I was just like, do you know what? I'm just going to take one set of rods. I'm going to take my 12-foot rods. They were fine. They are wicked. I do wish I had scopes for the boats. Yeah, yeah They yeah. are the same. I've done a lot of boat work before with scopes, but I was just like, 12-foot rods will be all right, but it, 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 is, more of a, it? it is more G- of a Jim fact. swears by 13-foot rods but on boat work. In a really? boat? Yeah, I was saying that to him. I was like, why don't you want to use scope? He's like, no, you don't want to, you don't want to, you definitely want to use big ones. I don't know how he does it. It makes think, it look so easy, though. Yeah. You're probably good at fishing. Yeah, It makes maybe. it look so easy. But I just think oh, that... Yeah, I, I think it's Mate, mad. with yeah. my little yeah. T-Rex arms, I wouldn't be able to net yeah. it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So there there was that element. I learned, I mean, it didn't hinder me in any way. I wasn't able to... I mean, it didn't I mean yeah. I couldn't do things that I... But it just would have been a bit easier with scope. Like, you know, especially in that first venue where some of the spots, especially where you were fishing, were tight in the reeds mm. and a bit poky in that if you had a 12 foot rod it would be annoying especially in a short boat you know when you yeah sometimes yeah. you know the line might get wrapped around the um, tip and you've got it's to you got to ship it that, back yeah. ship it back scope you just go done sweet but apart from that mate yeah it was all good took, we, we took the bait droppers we took them you em. took bait droppers yeah we took them didn't like that no, we did. Oh, did we? Yeah, we, we put them in the van. Oh, that was when I was at football, was it? That was when you were yeah, at football. Yeah, like we that. took them. I put them in. empty bucket <laughs> there in the back. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't have to mix his bait up in that for him as well. Anything else, Henry? So you went off, you went off the actual travelling logistic. Italy's a fair old trek, mate. It's not round the corner. It's not sort of France. It's not even south of France. It's further. Route-wise, driving-wise, soundtrack-wise, how did that all play out, boys? Yeah, we've been stupid in the past, haven't we? I've just mm. gone... We'll just tank it in one. Yeah. We'll tank, and you get there and you're fucked and you've got to start the shoot like instantly or you, you get there at like 3 a.m. and get a couple of hours kip and before you know Alan's up and he's already mm. starting. So we decided to do it in two, uh, which was far more sensible. We should do it more often. We stopped in beautiful Luzerne in Switzerland, didn't we? We stopped in Luzerne. Trip down uh, memory lane. So yeah. the whole trip, like Henry, Henry's bores the sin out of me because Henry is like a what would you call it a wealth of knowledge a nerd <laughs> a guy nerd he's just a, like a history history, a history, history, history you? and he says like he just get in the morning he'll just put on a history video on YouTube yeah the Napoleonic Wars to World War 2 oh my god um, I love it mate I absolutely love it so obviously the whole drive I wonder down. why none of these girls want to <laughs> yeah what's up with them any history books? so basically the whole way through Europe Henry's just actually during World War One, this happened and World oh, War Two. I'm just me, like mate. headphones in I don't care but when we get to Switzerland because Henry grew up in Switzerland 
it reaches another level. He's just, well, do you know when the number plates on that car are like that? I don't give a shit, mate. I've not been back for ages either. I don't think I've been back since my parents oh. left. So, and it, it, where we stopped was the town right next to where I grew up. So I've been there quite a lot and I was loving it. But no one seemed to have the, the same <laughs> same love for my adopted country. as well, I did. did he give you any Le- I, Henry Lennon history? So when we got <laughs> there, we stayed the night and we, we got a train. He was like, we'll get to the train station. It's down there. And then missed about free train. <laughs> it's like, I know my way around. Follow me. He's like, can't, can't remember this bit, actually. We'll just... But then, he's, he was in his element. He's got oh, seven yeah, lads, yeah. six lads following him around. He's like, fingered a bird there. <laughs> <laughs> Pulled some bird there. Got some bird's number there. <laughs> Ate here with my family once. <laughs> just stuff like that. Classic. Yeah. None of us 11. give a shit. I fingered a bird there once. <laughs> Those words I think did come out of my mouth. I did. I'm not. I'm not joking. <laughs> I'll joke. take that one. I know, but it was like it would be that, and then it was like caught a chub out of that once. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. brilliant. What a tour guide. How diverse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, that's what it felt like. Brilliant. It felt like I had a headset on because of his bellowing oh. voice, and I'm following him around, and he's telling me all about this city along with where he fingered girls. <laughs> what more could you want on a Monday afternoon or whatever it was? I'm pretty sure. How old were they? Oh God. Well, I was the same. I'm not going to say how old they were, but they, I was the same age. Just tried to team up for that one. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to say. I will admit. To but I was, I was the same age as them at the time. Oh, my God. I, if, I, I, if I say what, I, what, what I'm about to say, then it sounds very weird. Because that's a soundbite that then Hassan takes. <laughs> that goes in the group, mate. <laughs> this is where outside of a podcast in the office, like it just, and I've just had to yeah, behave yourself, out. Dan. Behave yourself. Back to professional mode. Yeah. So you yeah. had a stopover yeah. in Switzerland. We had some yeah. nice... Um... Chucking it about how amazing the food is. It's just sausage and mash. It's no, we had bratwurst and rusty. We had, we had like... What? Uh, rusty's like fried mash. It's just potato, isn't it? It's okay. just potato. It's sausage and potato. And he's banging on about it. It's the most amazing meal he'll ever have. It was have. good. I thought it was really nice. It's, it's a bang average <laughs> we went Thursday to that really night. Nice restaurant, it's wasn't a, it? That's a bang average Thursday night. He's, he's a bit of a philistine when it comes to... Like other countries and stuff. I remember when we were going through Italy, I was like, oh, look how amazing these towns are. It's like, yeah, whatever. You just don't really care about I think it, at you? that point, I think anything that come out of your mouth, I was just like, just please stop. Yes, yeah, too much, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. He'd already told me about Overload. the history of how this road was made. And So you, you drove? Did you do all the driving? No, we split no. it up. Oh, you did bit, split it up. We all split it up. Split there up. was some tie-in. I've seen that in a video when you weren't driving. So there was some rig stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. you probably, because uh, I... Were you prepped? I was, um, well, I just use a Ronnie, so I just changed the hook. <laughs> oh, yeah. One rig. Tied yeah. some Deal. rigs. Yeah. Long old drive, tied a few rigs. Soundtrack? It was that? Bit of everyone? Uh, well, we're pretty similar. There's a lot of um, David he... Brent life on the road played yeah. on those trips, isn't there, where me and you go? Yeah. You know, for the um, guy from the, uh, the office, Ricky Gervais right? in the yeah, office, yeah, he, made yeah, like yeah. A, he made like a spoof album. <laughs> oh, Slough. <laughs> My kind of town, I don't know how. Anyone, Anyone could let you down. down. Yeah. Oh my god. So listen to a lot of that. Boys. What is going on here? Um, it's a good track. What good else album. are we listening to? I don't know. It was March, mate. Yeah. It's so nice some good music. We'd we listen, quite liked it. We listened to some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Who was in the van with us? <laughs> no, some loser. Um <laughs> Was it Bastille? No, I think they swap. We kept swapping, I think. We had Brad for quite a bit. We had Brad yeah, for yeah. a bit, Bastille for oh, a bit, Brad Kurt, Curly album. for a bit. Yeah. yeah. No, it was, um, the drive was good. Yeah. So you got the there, way. you meet up with the old connection, and you, you basically go to the first venue. And upon me seeing the video on the first venue, that first venue looked mega, mate. Mm, it was cool. Intimate, it looked snaggy. So, uh, the, the drone shots, I was watching it the other day, proofing it, and I was like, oh my God, I didn't really even realise it looked... Like that, like where you were, it seems to just go back for ages, all mm, them yeah. rushes. And yeah. Yeah. obviously the backdrop behind me, which obviously I'm not looking at the whole time, I'm looking at the football pitch on the other side. But behind me, you've got like the foothill of the Alps and everything. Yeah. Right. I, um, so to, to, to really describe nice the lake, put a picture in people's heads, eight acres, 10 acres, yeah, yeah, something eight. like that. Um, there, You couldn't walk all the way around it. So yeah. Henry swim, access by boat only. My swim, access by boat only. Um and then there's no real long toes. It's not. It's quite like long and almost mm. thin. There's reeds across from me, hundred yards away, something like hundred and twenty. Um, 
And then, yeah, there's a bit of snags under the water, but reed line on the far side, no clarity, 12 foot deep in the depths. And then we were, actually a lot of it, we were fishing up on the shelf where the reeds were, two, three foot. Okay. Um, but yeah, nothing mental. But I think... Very it, English. It, Very English, yeah. It was a bit English with yeah, boats, yeah. with boats, yeah. Oh, um, twat belly boat anglers as well. I didn't oh yeah, the old law anglers. Yeah, so this is another thing with Henry. Like, he always bangs on about how get out of England, England shit, it's so busy, go to Europe, you don't get bothered by anyone. You do. It's just a different sort. Yeah. yeah. But what you've got to realise is you've got to accommodate or you've got to know that, you know, come to terms with the fact that everywhere you go, there's other anglers. There's you, dickheads everywhere. You got. Sh- <laughs> this is what I mean. I'm very much like, well, yeah, it's a, it's, it's going to happen. You know, it's it going to happen. Pointless losing your head. Henry had Google translated in Italian. What? I'll come over there and <laughs> smash your face in, you, you twat. In Italian. I didn't say it. That was. He didn't say it, but he was ready. He'd <laughs> yeah, learnt he it in ready. Italian. <laughs> And I was just like, look, if I get wiped out, I get wiped out. You put the rod back out. Annoying, sure. But that's Europe fishing. That's it. Henry's just like, they've done it. Put the- they're targeting <laughs> yeah. me personally. This is my lane. Yeah. Get off. We it. were here first. <laughs> my plan was, so we got there. We got there really rushing to get the rods out. Loads of disturbance. And I was like, right, I'm just going to leave them now because the- there's carp. They know the bait's there. They're just a bit scared. If I can just have no boats in this part of the water, they're going to come here. They're going to chill. It's going to be fine. That's it. I'm not going out again. And then first thing that next morning, out they come in their belly boats. Having a good day. Casting yeah. over Enjoying your lines. their day. What do you say? Yeah. Kicking the carp in the face. Yeah, because it was shallow. It's just like, like turfing my spot up and that. But So yeah, I, I was riled up. The stock of the lake, mm. obviously you knew a bit about the lake. You've got intel with regards to it. How, how was that in terms of how did it look? What size of the carp were in there? What were you sort of, I'm getting well, it's pretty standard in terms of you guys fish towards what the visible features are. Mm. But you had a did you have a couple of nights on there to sort of two nights, yeah. yeah. We got there late on the day on the first day, had a night, had all day, had a night, and then went we're going early the next morning. Stock wise, some good ones in there. There was like a handful of big mirrors. Was that that's what we were really want. If we caught one of them, it'd be like game on, but yeah, 20, like 25 kilo was or 25.2 kilo was the biggest mirror in there, which is fifty five do, pounds. Yeah. So I think there was something like 10 over 20 kilo there's like a good head of of big mirrors and then seemed to be classic italy after that just a lot of little 15 commons. to 25 pound commons tactics what you going with dan um a long time ago wasn't it <laughs> so i would have yeah so it was the, the same as always really for me say, why do you have to think about that yeah that really copied off elliot gray yeah, Ooh. seems to work yeah. everywhere. Bites, so. No bites, he's rose above it. <laughs> yeah, I d- he's right with the white. No, no, that'd be serious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So from memory, he he baited it up a bit for us. Yeah, leading up to it with just boilie. Um, he said beforehand, just fish over a handful of boilie in these areas. Seems to work this time of year. They they tend to feed all winter in there. Right. Um, so yeah, that's what I did. Uh, towed out to areas and just really simple fishing. Uh, didn't even ste- step anything up really. I, again, like I was saying earlier, I put a mono snag leader on because there was snags under the water. Mm. Um, you had like a big tree, didn't you? Right in front of yeah, the in, in the there. middle, in, in the middle, middle of the like a random tree. Yeah, in the middle of the lake in front of me, there was a tree, so I just needed to be careful of that. Apart from yeah. that, it was just towing out six to eight foot deep, clay kind of bottom, so nothing you know pre- presenting was never an issue. Yeah, and I just fished fifteen mil cultured up baits, some topped, couple topped with. Um, like as a snowman top with a bright one and a handful of boilies in, scattered in the area because that's what he'd been baiting with and yeah, that's what I went with. See any show when you got that? I mean, nah. did, weather-wise, what was it like nah. as well? I can't remember. It was cold. Video. Yeah. The whole trip, it was really like 20s clear during the day and then freezing at night for pretty much the whole trip, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was a little bit different. <laughs> I went, uh, like where I started, not... I was fishing the edge of the snags, and then as I got further on, I fished a little bit further into them, fishing like washing lines and, okay. and things like that. Um, I, I think that's how I got my one fish. But I had loads of dot islands to my right, whereas Dan didn't. So I was fishing like over a dot island to another next to another dot island, where I, I remember going in and seeing between these dot islands, like there was two or three where you quite clearly see the fish had been feeding. And they pushed the the reeds to the side. Yeah, disturbed it. 
And um, so, I've, so I was fishing in them and then I was fishing to my left where Richard said was a good spot. There were the, there was the rushes, but they had big undercuts. So obviously thinking, oh, they're going to get really far under there. And that, that that's when I had my bite off, actually, because that's when I didn't have to move because I didn't get taken out by the belly belt anglers. Yeah, you said you'd left and that's, that that's the, the only start. one I left the whole time and that's when I got the bite on. So that one I, um, yeah, I was just fishing as close as I could to this tree where the the, the bank was undercut. Um, but yeah, I was starting off thinking like, oh yeah, it'd be fine. I'll just get rods out on the edge of these snags and I'll get bites and I'll just leave it. But then as more and more activities are, I think they're just going to be pushed further and further into those snags or where they think they're safe so mm. I put, a, put a rod there basically you said ronnie rigs mate what's the comp the comp you just changed the hook actually i hook think button? i think it was after this trip that then i went to pretty much fishing exclusively ronnie rigs wherever i went because now that i think about it i think i was fishing a slip d right there okay. um but then it was after this trip where i've i think i took part on the podcast with you earlier where I'm, uh, everyone's got a favorite rig yeah and they're yeah. all different they all catch. So for me, I just want one that can change the hook on really quickly. What hooks? What's your pattern for? Uh, claws all the time now. There I was using, um, I was using twisters. Long shanks or standard? Standard. Because okay. I used to use them when I was fishing bottom baits. Uh, but now I just use claws for everything because I just think that they're, that they're so much better. At... So Ronnie, Ronnie claws for absolutely everything. Even if you're fishing wafters, even if you're fishing... Wafters, yeah, I'll use for wafters. If I'm using straight bottom baits... You go back to... Then I'm, I might use something different, but the amount of times I use a straight bottom bait is hardly ever. I think if you, if you can use a straight bottom bait as a hook bait, you don't really have to be worried about counterbalancing them so much because they're just going to be sucking them back anyway. <laughs> Fair do. Um, so yeah, pretty much now all I use is Ronnie claws for... Yeah, honestly, everything. The only time I wouldn't use them if I was fishing a river with quite a bit of flow. You don't want it like yeah, doing that the, the whole time. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but now that I think I was using slip D's still a little bit. I think that's probably the last trip I used them. Um, it, it's fair to say that that's that sort of couple of nights until sort of the last morning was pretty was pretty tricky, wasn't it? Like it weren't easy that second day. No, no. I think it's one of them. It's, I think this is where timing comes into it quite a lot because with arriving late. Mm. it kind of kills that whole first mm. not kills the whole first night for you but it can really affect that whole first night you know I didn't even I didn't have rods set up so like by the time we got there Richard had done a taken us out in the water and kind of pointed out where he'd put a bit of bait in for us and where were good areas and that sort of thing we've gone back we've unloaded the van all the videographer stuff out also with the filming slows everything down we've loaded the boats we've gone out to our spots we've started uh, setting up and that's what before you know it's like 10 o'clock at night yeah and i've just got back in all rods set and you know with a small lake which is in a bit intimate that can it could have it might not have, but i kind of felt like look i've written off the first night it's all about tomorrow mm. suddenly you're in your last 24 hours by the time i wake up in the morning i was like right i've got 24 hours now on this lake i've only just really seen in full daylight well, not in full daylight but it's f i've just kind of yeah. Woken up, I've got 24 hours to go and then we're off. So even though two, it's two nights, it what it went like that. It went real quick. So um, I was confident going into the second night though because I was kind of set by then. You know, was, you replaced them in the day as in like the next day or did you, I, you said you left that one literally from the start. That's the you? only one I left, but then yeah. because that one I was already fishing quite close to the snag okay. and, the, and the cut. But the other ones where I was fishing on the edge, that's and then the belly boat ca anglers come out. I'm like, well, to. I might as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's been disturbed. I might as well go out and really get them 100 percent bang on. And that's when I saw it in between those dot islands, those spots I was talking about. And when I when I left, because obviously I had to go out to get my poles with the washing line clips on. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I still remember seeing two carp. That's the only two carp I actually saw in the water. They're in the shallows in that warm water. So I think if if we'd fished there for the day, I think I would 100 percent got one because that's they're going to be there in the day. But where the belly boat angles come out in the day and I'm replacing them, they've not actually been there oh, during yeah. the bite time. I'd be surprised if I've got one at night because it's two foot of water. That's when you're not really expecting them to be there. But if I think I'd left them out there for the rest of that day, I think I would have got in the day, a yeah, bite on them. But it's like Dan says, that time goes so, so quickly. And you throw in a couple of pieces to camera and doing things a few times to get it on film. Before, yeah, before you know it, you, you've, you've kind of got any fishing time. Yeah, and you know, with that big bank of reeds and shallows, we were banking on the days, I think, a little bit because mm. the sun came up kind of opposite the reeds and the shallow okay. bank. So it's got sunlight all day. And at that time of year, you know they're going to gonna be in there. So you're banking on them being in there in the day. And then in the night, it's a bit, especially with the temperatures plummeting at night, 
you're hoping to catch them in the day. But with the belly belt angles and that coming in, it does put a detriment on it. But, you know, Richard, I think, had the first bite, didn't he? Going into the second night, 3 a.m., mm. I heard I got woken up to, um, <laughs> come on, yes, yeah. Yeah, I was come. like, oh, my God, he's got the big one. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> they, you know, the screams from them boys. So I knew those boys have had one. I was buzzing. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Drifted off again. I got woken up by a rat on me. A rat on you? Yeah. <laughs> they thought we were mental as well. These Italians, they thought the videographers that were with them on their swim, they thought they were mental for not zipping their doors up at night. Having a, zip my door. having a door open. Having the door, like the hot, it's, it's cold. It's gen- I was sitting out under the stars just because I was like, it's not going to rain. I'll be fine. They thought I was bat mad, shit, bat shit crazy. They thought I was fucking mental. Um, but it wasn't that bad. I don't I've think. survived the fence, so boys. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I've woken up one night and literally, like, I've got kind of my waterproof shroud over my head. I could feel something there. I just suddenly realised it's a rat and I just, boom, punched it. I heard it go. Anyway, shit story. Um, there was a rat on my face. Punched I went a to, rat. Punched a rat. <laughs> Punched a rat. <laughs> what else do you want to know? Face. Peter, come at me. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then the next morning, woken up, gutted, nothing. Now I'm watching the clock. I've got up first light. Must have been six, seven, first light. Mm. Um, we're leaving at 10. We have to be on the road at 10, so packing up at nine. I've got a couple hours left, and I was a bit like, no, come on. It was a lovely morning, miss rolling and that. Um, really finicky take. And I thought, because I'd been picked up by a coot the day before, I looked over, no coots there. I was thinking... But it just didn't really do a lot. I was like, coat, must be a coat. Got it all the way in. Yeah, woke up underneath me and I had carp on. And I was just like, it's kind of just completely out of the blue. No signs, didn't expect it. You know, yeah. when it's proper like, right, on to the next one sort of thing. And um, yeah, netted my first Italian carp, about 20 pounds, 23 pounds, something like that. Um, buzzing. He was screwing. Yeah, because you caught one, mate. Not only had Richard caught, but Dan caught one. So I'm I'm there pretty, punching uh, the ground. I'm pretty sure it's in the video. It's in the video. He just goes, I've got a catch one now. Yeah, but you don't <laughs> see it in the video. You don't see it to the extent which it, he was screwing. Yeah. He was screwing. Wow. <laughs> it's Henry <laughs> Lennon's Continental Connection. Like, yeah. like Dan showing me up. Like, me, me and it, I'm Competition. In, it's important. Yeah, so Henry's us. really, really competitive. I'm, I'm, I'm not at all competitive. And so, like... Because he loses all the time. So um, <laughs> this is just what it's like. So when he, if I think we said it in it, it's like, what would what would be your dream scenario? And Henry would be like, I'd catch if Every eight carp. if eight fish were caught. What would be your dream scenario? He's like, me eight, done none, <laughs> embarrassed. And I'll be like, oh, I'd be great if we both catch one. What a team player! Uh, if, <laughs> really if, at each, if at each venue we both catch one, that'd be great. He's just like, I'd love to catch. All the fish at all the venues, and Dan to catch nothing, and him and him just look pathetic. <laughs> that is his. That is his. That be the dream. So <laughs> on, if only, if only that on that first morning when he like I've gone over the um, walkie talkie, gone yes, just add one, boys buzzing. Well, getting, well I'm, done. I'm, <laughs> I'm, so I'm, getting, I'm getting my Google Translate up. <laughs> Figure out. Off your little twat. <laughs> <laughs> he was in Italian. He was so annoyed. Luckily, literally like half hour later. Something like yeah, that, yeah, maybe yeah. an hour that, later. Rod, I left out the whole time. He's had his bite. And where I'm like, come on, Henry, you'll get one, you'll get one. He's had it. He's like, mine was bigger than yeah, yours, you twat. 26. <laughs> How's that? Do you know what I mean? This is what I've got to deal with. 23 oh pounds, 26 God. pounds. It's yeah, a, which a, one's bigger? 26. It, everything's a competition. Yeah. It's, so I win. It's a, it's a, it's a small common. It's a yeah, small 20 yeah. pound common. Mine was 26. You're a loser. You're, yours was a low 20. Mine was a mid 20. Sure. Um, yeah, my, it w- wasn't a new. Uh, I'd actually fished in Italy before, so that was. Uh, I was. That's my aim for that trip was to catch a, a new Italian PB. Uh, what was the previous PB? Thirty two. Yeah. So, mm. so that one didn't didn't break uh, my Italian PB, but that's I was expecting Bolsena to do it. Um, spoiler, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Collectively, though. <laughs> Collectively, you did it, didn't you? If you added them all together on Bolsena. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you smashed it. Just about. <laughs> Maybe. Um, so, yeah, that was um, good because I didn't want to go back as well because I was in the banker swim, apparently. If I if I had to go back He's on that put toe. himself in the banker. Going, oh, my God. I've not. This is, what, this is what I was thinking as I was packing up because I think I had everything packed up besides the rods when it went. And I was just thinking, oh, I'm going to be going back over on that boat, having to explain to them why I've not caught. The, that, think that's I'm a, an idiot. This is what I mean, the difference in mindset. No oh, one's right. going to think when he's coming across, look at this loser, look at the loser, yeah. loser. 
None oh, of us no. think about that sort of thing, but no. Henry's just like, they're all going to think I'm pathetic. <laughs> no one. It's no like one's... he's got something to prove. All Almost the time. like, yeah. <laughs> but, no, but genuinely, <laughs> I'll side with you a little bit, Henry, because it is the first venue on, like, it is quite a high pressure trip because mm. you've got a lot of people and you're abroad. And I it's, get hit, it. it's his name above the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you yeah. want to get off to a good start because then yeah. the pressure's off, isn't it? You can't I, I always, Dan said earlier that he doesn't. He did feel the pressure in this one, but not in general. But I always feel it massively. On every sh- hugely. And that one even more, because again, it's probably the biggest investment we put in one and it's my name in front of it. But I always feel the pressure so much on those shoots because you're like, oh, you, like you've been paid to do this. You've got to get a result. You've got to get a result. Yeah, you've yeah, not, yeah. It's not just your time you're wasting. You're wasting the company's money. You're wasting other people's time who've come to film you. You've got to pull it out of the bag. You're so missing I, Wednesday football. I'm missing I mean? Wednesday football. Like, yeah, I'm letting them down. So. Whereas, I, I think how I've always said it is like, I'm always going to try as hard as I can. Mm. And I can't do any more than that. I can't give any more than that. So as long as I know I'm doing that, I won't feel pressure. I always find that mindset really disheartening though. That's my same mindset. Because that? I always think if I try my hardest and still don't succeed, then that means I'm literally just shit. No, it isn't. <laughs> That's why I always think How with that. How do you think that, mate? Because if you try your hardest and you still can't do it, you've tried your absolute hardest and you still can't do it, I'd rather try 8% and do it than... Because than, <laughs> then, then at least... Oh, imagine what I could do at 100%. But, but, if I try 100% and still can't do it, that means I'd fundamentally I'm just not no, good No, it don't, because there's a, yeah, lot of factors, there's a lot of factors that aren't your control. Hassan, mate. leave it. Let him have oh, it. Yeah. This could be a long podcast otherwise. Yeah. I'm right, <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> Yes, Henry, so. that means you're rubbish. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I caught. Yeah, you did catch. So, £26, pound, yeah, bigger than Dan. I caught he's the won. biggest, he's Hassan. Won. So I'm winning, actually. And then it was on to venue two. How far away was venue two? It felt like ages, didn't five, it? Five hour drive. Yeah. Yeah. Was it five hours? There's a lot of driving in this one. It, South. Italy's a big country. <laughs> yeah, it is big, but five hours seems long. Yeah, it was because we were in northern Italy. I think we'd just come over the Alps. Yeah. And then uh, we had to go to, to central Italy for this, for this next one. So it was a long old drive. Um, got there well late. Mm. I remember it being a bit spooky. I'll be sat on camera. It's a bit spooky just going through this random field. And then you're really in like a big valley, loads of trees and everything. And so the next uh, one was over, called Undergrowth and stuff. The T- Tver River? Tver River? Something like that. Something like that. It was a big river, river system. So again, mm. different venue. Something we don't really have in the UK. Obviously, we have rivers, but not to this magnitude. What would you say, 100 yards to the far bank? Yeah, oh, it, was, okay. it was the depth and the snags that Un- fucked me, though. Yeah, 100 yards wide, big flow on it, 40 foot deep. So 40 foot? But, yeah, yeah, it's savage. crazy. Well, when I you thought, the actually like, oh my God, looking from can't the, be right. Looking from the photos and that sort of thing, because you can see falling trees and you can see the top of the trees coming out, you think it can't. it's not that deep. It'll just be, you know, maybe eight foot deep, yeah, something like 10 that. Foot. 10 foot deep? Yeah. Nah, it's 40 foot deep. These trees are huge and that's literally the very tops of the trees poking out and there's 40 foot of... Um, so again, the reason we chose it because you ain't fishing like somewhere like that in, um, <laughs> nah. in England. So it was, uh, yeah, something new for us. You went bait boat, didn't you? I did at the start because we got there so late and it, it was. I just wanted to get rods out yeah. and I thought if I just go out and he, he seemed adamant, Fabio. So we met up with another guy in the Nash team who fishes yes. there, yeah, yeah, Fabio. Fabio. And Fabio just seemed adamant but basically if you had rods fishing, you were going to catch. So I'm like, right, I'm going to go out with the bait boat to see if I can just drop them where it looks clear and then in the morning, if it doesn't work, then... I can I'll, reset. I'll, I'll start fresh. Yeah. Um, because for me, I was just like, right, I just need to get the rods out because it seems like if you get the rods out, you're going to catch. And um, for pretty much every single one I tried to reel in the morning was was snag. Snag. I would fish that so differently now to how we fished it. Because that, how we, you need to fish that is how, when I went over to Spain and fished with Samir on his river, that's fish how I would ha- I'd fish it, how Samir fished how, it. How's that? So you'd I'd go deep into the snags on the opposite side, fish washing lines really close in. Okay. And you fish them really low and close in so that if you if you fish a washing line and you fish high up into a tree yeah. and just straight down, yeah. when when the fish, when you get a bite... Speak of the devil. Speak of the devil. He's calling me now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, um, you'll get a bite and because they don't feel pressure anywhere, because it's just straight above, yeah. they're just going to go straight into the snags. But if you go deep into them, when they bite, they feel the pressure for the, of the washing line in oh, the so snag. So they come out. And I think that's 
it's a much better way to get better presentation. You need to have a side scan as well on your Echo so that you know where these trees are coming out. Because mm. we didn't have side scan on our Echo. So that really, I don't, I don't think um, Richard did either. And that's really fucks you because you're thinking, you might be straight above a tiny little bit that's clear. You're like, oh, great, perfect. Even if you dunk around a little bit. But there could be two massive, two massive yeah, trees yeah. coming all the way out. So you need to find those ones where it's clear all around, fish deep into the snags with the washing line. And that's that's our fish. I think we would we probably would catch like that. Rich, um, Richard caught one fishing kind of like that, but I don't think he, he still wouldn't be doing it 100% because he didn't have the side scan, but he was fishing a, a washing line deep into the snags and right. he caught a little common. Um, but yeah, I've, I've thought about that one more and that's one where I've I'd never fished somewhere like that when we got there, but now that I've, we've had that session, saw what didn't work, and then I've had that session with Samir, where Samir's like an expert doing that sort of stuff, I'd fish that so differently now. I think we probably would would have maybe nicked one, but I just don't think the fish were there in, in numbers yeah. when we were fishing it. There's not many. He, he said the biggest fish in the stretch, which might be like 50 kilometres long, was like 20 kilos. So not, you know, it's big fish, 44 pound, but it's yeah. not like mental. But there was a hell of a lot of little yeah. 10, 12, 15 yeah. pound comments. It was just about fishing that venue and getting a bite out of it. Mm. And I, yeah, they just weren't there. He just, he, he said, like uh, Fabio said, if you're presented, you'll, you'll get mm. one or two, you'll get a couple. And I've followed Fabio and seen how he gets on and that, like he does. That's how he catches them. I just don't think they were there. We never saw him crashing. We never saw him like in the snags crashing and that. So I don't think they were there. Got a chip. Oh, you did. And a bream. Yeah. So and now I'm winning. And a bream. We didn't see the bream. No, there's, yeah? there's a photo of me. There's did a photo. There's, yes, Hassan. There's, there's a photo. photo of it as well. I wouldn't even. A trout hold. Trout hold. <laughs> Most people call it a skimmer, but. Was it a skimmer? What are we talking about? When does a, when does a skimmer yeah. become a bream? Ah, I don't know. When it's great still, question. When it's still translucent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty translucent. Mm. But as you can see now, the facts don't lie. I'm smashing down at this point. Well, you a can't chub, count them. You're not a chub, counting a bream. Them. And a carp that's bigger than his. Yeah, uh, Henry also thinks he keeps getting done because the wind is blowing his uh, washing line out of the clip. No, you go, that... oh, I've lost another one. <laughs> it's, it's the wind, Henry. It's the braid. And the no, wind. what that was no was stretch, yeah, I've had mate. six bites, Dan. <laughs> again, this is this is where you're fishing. This is again where we where we did something wrong because we were, well I did something wrong because I'm inexperienced. I did try and fish one on a washing line. I wasn't fishing it as well as I could have. But where I put it quite high up in a tree that's moving. And we've got sinking braid because we need to sink in braid for the next venue. Mm. So I just fish with sinking braid. As soon as it touches that water, Ding, yeah. it's not coming out. Yeah. And it just more and more of it goes in. And then it's coming out of the water. You need to fish something re- when you're fishing those wash lines really, really sturdy. Because if the if it's in a tree where it's moving, it's going to pull it, out the clip. It, it, it? Not even it's going to pull out the clip. It's it's going to drop into the water. And as soon as it drops into that water, and if, if you've got sinking braid, you're fucked. Like mm. it's just a waiting game till there's just too much pressure in it, and then it pulls out the clip. So um, yeah, I think we could have fished it better but like dan said i think if even if we fished it absolutely 110 percent technically how you should have fished it i think you might have nicked one or two little commons but yeah they just weren't there because i know that fabio doesn't fish it that way he just fishes it where he's presenting pretty much how we were fishing and he fishes he catches loads that's where he said he sometimes just casts yeah and to put it it into perspective i went out I, i think we got there late that first night i spent a lot of time that first night i went to bed real real late but just echo sounding so I've got a half decent one on my boat because so I mm. took the boat and he just said oh, I'm going to use a bait boat and I went out and I was just like okay let's see what we got here boom 38 foot oh, okay it's deep and then like literally didn't even get that far out and you just see on the echo these whole trees yeah. just appear like okay it might be snaggy there let's yeah, go this way miss. let's go that way and I just searched this whole area in front of me I was just like it is well snaggy but that I did find and like I'd go over an area see a snag but then I'd like just circle that whole area and just try and find, okay, that's too bad and move along. I did, especially on that first night, I went a bit more conservative with where I put them. Right, yeah. Just away, away from, but Richard was like, no, nah, you've got to go in there. You've got to go in there. And I think that's a learning curve from Italian style to English style. Like I'm very conscious of the whole danger fishing thing. Yeah. I'm not going to go right in there, but he's like, no, you're right. You've got a boat. You just go out and you'll be able to get it out. And he did. He, hooked his in the middle of the snag, went over and it was there and he just popped it up and netted it. So that's something I could have perhaps done is just gone. And I think I did the next day once I'd gone out again, I'd put a bit more into the, into the snag. There's only last sometimes the way that you fish in like that rainbow style that you've got yeah. to fish sometimes in Europe. If you fish that anywhere in the UK, mm. you'd get kicked off that lake mm. in seconds. Yeah, 100%. In Europe, it's just like, yeah, you get better. do it. 
Don't stop your head, does it? <laughs> <laughs> so that was that. Difficult, tough, but cool. It sounds like testing but and cool, yeah. a lovely place to wake up mate yeah, because yeah, as henry said crazy, it was they? so in the middle of nowhere we were across this farmer's field fabio's got permission off the farmer to fish these spots he's made the swims themselves it's down this treacherous bank like that where you're trying to carry like leisure batteries and boats on your back and down you're so out of the way from civilization mm. like you can see the town across the field like a mile away or something but like you're just out there and i woke up that morning And I was just like, mist rolling, snags coming out the river, the river flowing through, rods are rocking. As you say, the bird life Mm. was deafening, just deafening. And I was like, this is cool. This is enjoyable. Like I sat there and I had a coffee with Brad and it was, yeah, it was nice. And it's not the sort of thing you get in England again. No, totally not. Then we packed up and went home. (laughs) (laughs) We went somewhere even scarier. You what? And then we went somewhere even scarier. Yeah, yeah. So the last venue is pretty. I mean, I've known people, a lot of people, to sort of go fish very unsuccessfully. On it's massive, it's deep, it ain't easy, and you're in like the end of March, and you've got how many nights left? Three, yeah, like three or four. Yeah, four. Like maybe three four. or four. four yeah. Five, maybe five, including that first night. Did we have four at the new spot, and then that first night we just got there, put the rods out in that first spot, and then went. Something like that. Well, 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 Three, well, four, well, yeah. five nights, something like that. So you rocked up at Bo- not, not enough, it felt like. It, not enough, but that's where we banked our time. We'd done two yeah. nights at the first yeah. one, a quick night, and then uh, 24 hours after that. And then the second one, we just swung in, done a night and a day, and then off again. Bolsena, um, we get, we, that's the one we wanted to bank as much because you need it. Yeah. The, the scope of the venue. What was your first impressions on, on seeing... Because there's hearing about it, they're seeing it on video. First impressions, I went, oh, I didn't realise we were near the coast. Yeah. yeah Jesus like Christ. Like, properly, like beaches, waves coming. It so really does feel like you're... To put, yeah, to put into perspective, no one knows what Lago de Bolsena is. It's a volcanic lake. It's mm. massive. Cir- it's just a massive circle, mm. isn't it? It's just mm. r- around. Um, and it's 45 kilometres round. Yeah, sounds about right. I think it's 45 kilometres around. I kept saying 45 miles, but apparently it's not. I think it's 45 kilometres around one side to the other. If you Because you can obviously see the opposite bank, but it's eight miles. Jeez. From one side to the other, it's eight miles. 500 foot deep. In, 500 foot of volcanic. It's going to be goes deep. down to 500 foot deep. There's a big island in the middle. Um, and, uh, Piece of cake. Yeah. It was... Yeah, I... Uh, were you intimidated, scared? Oh, uh, to be honest, to be honest, on the wet, on the build-up to it, I was, I was saying to you, wasn't I, the whole time, like they'll just be in the edge, it'd be fine. We'll just find them in the edge. We find the edge, and, and I we- was going, agreed, they're going to be in the shallow water somewhere. Ideally, if the sun's up and it's early in the, we'll find. But it was the fact that there's forty-five kilometers of edge. Mm. They could be in any of it. That's yeah. what I was a and, bit like. And it wasn't till we came where it, it's got some where it is that volcano sort of shape there's you sort of come down onto it a little bit from around uh like higher up and it's when we sort of turned um, like mountainside and then you see it for the first time that's when i was like oh this is a little bit scary like, eight, eight miles across is quite a long yeah way. that is massive that's gonna be 50 times bigger than anywhere i've caught a car from before mm. so yeah it's a bit a bit intimidating it's so, that sort of size and scope of venue like to think about putting a bait in there and just having a bait randomly in all that water is just harrowing in it like that it, that that's what gets me i think you said about it in same thing with orellana like al seen them show that first night but then even putting a bait out even though you've seen them it's still a massive volume mm. of water and they could move at any point locating them Finding them, tracking them down. What was the thought process? How are you going about that? Relying a lot on um, Richard. A huge amount of trust in those guys. Yeah, you've got it. You can't, you can't, as much as we're get up, go find them, you you can't rely on your own eyes to go and find them. Not in four days. Not in four days. Uh, You've got to rely on the local knowledge. What areas are good at what time of year? They said the wind is a massive, massive influence on where the carp will be. Of which there was none. Flat car, mate. No the, wind. The, 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 the day we left was so, like, perfect conditions. The yeah, day we it was left. starting to pick up on the mm. last day. There's some waves crashing in because, as you can imagine, if the wind's coming across from 
that eight miles from the other bank. Yeah. You know, it's really, it, it feel like a gentle breeze, but it really starting to white cap mm. and crash in while we were there, mate. Oh, swimming pool. Black like, calm. You see in the video, like we're just on the boat and it's just like not yeah. a, it, quite impressive to see a, a sheet of water that big as a mill mm. pond. And it was get just. the floaters out, boys. And then at night as well, it would get freezing. Like every morning, woke up with frost. Um, yeah. And then, it, then you're wearing t shirts and shorts during the day. It was. Yeah. Not ideal conditions, and yeah, like Dan said. So the first night we we were rely- well, we were always relying on their knowledge. But the first night we went to another one of Richard's mates, Ivan's yeah, house. Actually. He's got a house on the shoreline, um, and we saw it. That that was more to sort of everyone for, to shower, to recharge batteries, to back stuff up. We needed like a bit of a yeah, regroup day. We got we got there late on um, on that first lake. It's manageable. It's ten acres. Yeah, we can deal with this. You don't want to be turning up in the dark and go, right then, lads, rods out it is. Don't get me wrong, we put rods out, but we didn't go to our the spot we were aiming for. Yeah, we, yeah. we used it as a stop in. Mm. Uh, Ivan's uh, girlfriend cooked us, cooked us, baked us a lovely tiramisu. Oh, right, that's paying that. That was nice, wasn't it? What did you it? do for food the rest of the time? Italy, this is what, Italy's food, but you said, were you guys cooking most of the time? No, so first venue, we cooked a bit. Um, we ordered some pizza. What was that like? Italian pizza ordered to the bank? The same yeah, what it pizza, was, it was like this dough base <laughs> with <laughs> tomato. So, was it? That was nice. It was really good. Wow, so different. You know, <laughs> <In I>, um, <laughs> yeah, it was nice. And then the second place, we stopped and got some food, but Fabio bought, oh, that was bang. bought a, uh, a, a a saucepan, yeah. frying pan, a big wok looking thing like this. And cooked this massive carbonara in it for. Oh yeah, go like on. He's a really, he's really good cook as well, at Fabio. And that was like the pasta was just so perfect al dente, just oh, mm. delicious. Uh, so, uh, but then apart from that, like McDonald's and that, yeah, <laughs> we just fended. So for cultured, it. man. Yeah, mate. We had to just fend yeah. for ourselves, like fair do. So you've had this night, sort of fishing, but it's a stopover. You've had a lovely feed. Yeah, we did put we did put rods out, which was. It was just in front of. It was, it <laughs> this was well funny. <laughs> so we, <laughs> oh, I think I know what you're going to say. <laughs> so we've gone to put rods out, right? Uh, we've got the big boat out, the 320. Yeah. And me, Richard, Roberto, who we haven't mentioned yet, but yes. we'll we'll get on to Roberto. Yeah. Roberto's another guy who helped us along the whole trip and was a massive, massive help for us. Uh, me, me, Henry, Roberto, and Richard all went out on the boat, and we said we're just going to go out, play some rigs. Uh, I would have put a bit of baiting out there for us outside, out the front, so they might have been there. But you're going to put rods out if you're there. Uh, so we've gone out. We've got an echo sounder out there. I've got the um, aquascope. Um, lights starting to fade. Henry's jumped in, and another thing that Al gave him was a pair of snorkel goggles. Right. Um, and because. Uh, to be fair, putting your head over the edge and looking through snorkel goggles, sorry, lost the mic, snorkel goggles is a lot better than... An aquascope. An aquascope. The aquascope, I put my head down, couldn't really see anything, yeah. like, especially when you started to get into like three metres plus or two, yeah, three three metres plus, you lose the bottom and that. Henry <laughs> was just, look at the size of the fucker as well. Like, he was just flopped over the front of the boat with his face in the water. And I just, like, me, 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 Richard and Roberto, we're just, like, tanking along. We're all just watching the echo going, oh, there's a mark on the echo there. Oh, yeah, there's a little dip there. That's nice. I just turn around and just see head in. Henry's ass, And it, all it is is he's just literally got his head under the water off the front of the boat going, tanking. And he's just, he's just <laughs> pops his head off. I think I've seen one. <laughs> he's like, face is soaked just like that. Cause of, cause it was goes, freezing as well. It was like nine degrees. Oh, I was getting brain I'm, getting, I'm getting brain free. I'm getting brain free. These guys are just going. Roberto Richard are like, what the What is he? Because we're looking at the echo. We're looking at the echo. We can see. It. And I was saying to him, did you see anything then? Because we've gone over like a... A hump or something. Yeah, a, no, like a, a banana, like, so something's pinged up on it. Oh. So uh, we've gone over a fish. I was like, did you see anything? He's just like, I think I saw a chump. <laughs> I was just like, what are you doing? I've got this amazing photo. <laughs> I'll give you the photo. It might be a video where I'm like panning around sunset. <laughs> oh, yeah. All the, all the boys and you just go and the Henry's just like, it's like he's being seasick. Yeah. He's just flopped over the front. I'm like... Mad, mate. <laughs> Because my hands were just behind my back as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like that. Just flopped over the front. Like, <laughs> looked like a beached whale. Yeah. Like. Absolute Good advice, Alan. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's again good advice. Spot wise, in terms of where you drop that time, did you drop on features? Or did you drop where you'd seen fish ping up? Which nah, is just basically that, it was just finding it clean on the echo, just like yeah, yeah that'll, that'll do. do. Just right. uh, different depths because that's more you know, especially those big waters there. It's not so much the little gravel spots and that is what depth the fish want to be in. So we just spread them out, spread them out in a big horseshoe in different depths, and we it was just a stopover. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was never like, there was zero confidence in those rods going. It was just like, yeah. if I'm there, we're going to put rods out. Sort yeah, of thing, yeah so. of course. And then you moved on, obviously, next day you were up. Hold on, Henry wanted to talk about his Kelly kettle. Oh, yeah, oh, the yeah. Kelly kettle. You see my Kelly kettle? So Yatesy, mate. We rang, he spoke to each other yesterday, what were we going to talk about? He goes, I'll talk about the Kelly kettle. I was like, go on then. <laughs> What are you going to say about this Kelly kettle, mate? I got a Kelly kettle for Christmas that year, and uh, I brought it with me, and it was a roaring success, I'd say. Henry boiled some water. Moving on. <laughs> well done. Well done, mate. The Italians uh, were impressed. Were they? Were they? Well, I think have they, they not got... seen a Kelly kettle before in Italy? No. They don't have Kelly kettles over there. <laughs> no. They'll they'll do the little um, screw bottom things. It's good technique. Aeropress. Good technique. No, not an aeropress. What are you talking um, about? It looks like a, almost like a mini kettle, but it just boils the. It's like a coffee. You know, like a Bialetti coffee boiler. Oh, it's like a particular type of that. It's not the Bialetti one, but it's a bit like that. Right. That's what they'll use. And to be fair to them, they were using that all the time because obviously the Italians they love their coffee. They all have this espresso. And then one time they're like, "Ah, oh, we'd like to try your Kelly kettle, Henry." Where are they from? <laughs> I don't know, foreign. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> um, and then. Um, they didn't ask again. They yeah, they used it once and then they yeah. weren't so Because Henry's just walking around like, I've always talked about his like little stupid weak ankles and he just like dawdles about and he's just picking up like one leaf at a time and he's like the ultimate hunter gatherer, Henry Lennon. He's just like scraping his feet around, picking up one reed at a time just to feed into the Kelly kettle. Slowish. And then it's boiling and water's pissing everywhere and he didn't realise like how to lift it up. So he's trying to like... Yeah, this is the worst thing. Boiling you know, kettle. You know, like. you know on the lid it's got like a little circle and that's what yeah. you use to lift off and then you can pour it. Yeah. I didn't realise that's what it was for. So every time I would put like pull my sleeve down and lift it from the bottom, which is obviously burning hot metal. <laughs> He's going, my this, is, all... this is a crap design. <laughs> yeah. and it I've wasn't got until... some improvements. <laughs> it wasn't until the last morning, literally the last morning where Curly, who'd seen me make a million of these <laughs> uh, um, uh, Kelly kettles throughout the trip, when you know you can just lift that little circle and it'll pour yeah, it for pour you. It. I was like, fucking hell, Curly. And I don't think he was doing that on purpose. I think he just couldn't be I hope to he tell was me. brilliant, Curly. If he but was. yeah, there's a segment for your podcast. <laughs> okay. nice. he- Henry bought a Kelly kettle with him. Everyone and... besides... Dan and the Italians thought it was great. Brad loved it. Tone loved it. Curly didn't fucking leave its side for the whole trip. I Curly just, loves a brew, man. Yeah. I just bought. Oh I just, my god! I just god. Bought, bought a kettle with gas. It's quick. That would be the way I'd go. But Curly does love a brew, mate. I, every mm. shoot he's on with me, I go for at least mm. one cylinder of like gas. <laughs> yeah, he he and he doesn't bring anything. <laughs> he, he just absolutely hammers you. Yeah. I've like, he bring a mug, does he? He goes, go he, on then, Hassan, he, get the kettle on. He brings nothing. I've I've seen, been, I have joke. seen him make brews before. <laughs> he bought um, gas out of like Aldi. It was like in hairspray canisters, oh. like long, thin ones like this. Just awful. I love him, mate, but he's an absolute... <laughs> scrounge. He is the biggest <laughs> scrounge. It's outrageous. Anyway, moving on from Curly. You've, you've, got a, you've got your Kelly kettle, and then you'll go into effectively fish the lake as well as you can. You've done your stopover. Remember we were kicking it around the beach? Well, I was kicking it around the beach to make it look um, older and more carpy. Yeah, it was bright. Did we still on the Kelly kettle? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, back to the Kelly kettle. It was too shiny. Have you used it since? Yeah, for a couple of times. Oh, fair play. It was a bit too shiny, so I spent the first morning just kicking it around the beach like a football to get it. Rugby. <laughs> <Straight> <laughs> a few dents in it and that. Yeah. Nice. Okay, we can stop talking about the Kelly kettle now. Sure, you're done. Yeah. 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 So where'd you move on to, mate? How'd you, how'd you go from there? Again, local knowledge with with the two lads. So, we, yeah, there was definitely a, a zone we wanted to target. Mm from the guys who've had past success there and it's good at that time of year or whatever it is. In fact, I think it was because there's like this sheer big mountain near it and off the off that mountain, there's loads and loads of big stones in the edge and they say they're a good feature, especially this time of the year. They warm warm the water mm. better. That's what they tell us. <laughs> and so they say that's why they think that holds holds fish at that time of year. So we'll try that. So that was a big old move to the other side of the lake into a boat then from there we had to boat to that spot which was like a kilometre from the nearest parking parking point um, so yeah the, again you lose like a whole day, whole day. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. just moving yeah like load the vans drive around there 
pump the boats up, load the boats. Again, all of our seven bed chairs, camera guys, the lot, tank over to that spot. And uh, yeah, go again. Same score, spread them out at different depths, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. This one was a bit more interesting because there was those rocks there. There yeah, was a lot something. more we- weed present. Um, Did you see any? Not the weed, but we had the underwater camera. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And this is where, again, you're fishing that horseshoe. So I wish I'd, I'd never really, I mean, it makes perfect sense, but on those big waters, just fishing that horseshoe shape, um, especially when you've got Richard and Roberta fishing as well. So was it two or four rods we had each? Or three? Three, I think. There's a lot of rods out and just fishing them in that yeah. semicircle. Yeah. So that whatever line the fish go is swimming through at that, that, that depth, they're going to hit bait oh, and they're not yeah. going to hit a line before they yeah. do so. Mm. Um, that I, I found that, Right, again, just learning from how they approach A lot of bait, or was it very much like a bite at a time? I varied, really. I think by the end, I was just testing it because nothing seemed to be working by the end. So I'd have one which was just fishing for a bite, but then I'd put one which I'd like consistently... Yeah, baited. No, I I put a lot of bait in, but then I'd just like try and leave it. But I wanted to try and stop anything in its tracks because, yeah... And, um, so it was a bit of variation because nothing was working, so we had to try try a couple of different tactics. And the first morning... Was it Richard who got the first bite? Richard caught one, didn't he? Yeah. Um, again, not just a small common, but I know that one felt a lot lot better just because of where you'd caught it from. Like It was crazy. Like I, I don't think we'll ever be able to put into perspective like how minuscule you feel sitting on the banks and just oh, yeah. dropping those rigs down, just going... In some in some instances, into eight meters of water, nine meters of water was our deepest. I think we went. We kind of went two, four, six, eight, a couple of rods in it's, each depth. It's when you go out at night to drop a to drop a rod. You put the return light of the R four back on. Yeah, four hundred yards out, you can barely see it. Is that how you get four hundred yards? Yeah. I think the furthest one, you can mm. barely see that it flashing you that far out. Um, and then you, and then you know that the because you did it during the day, that the island, which is like three miles away, is still just so far in the yeah, distance. So and the other side is just a ridiculous distance away. It's, it really is. Like, so then for him to get that bite, no matter how big it yeah, was yeah, going to yeah, be, yeah, it was just like, ridiculous. sick. Yeah, Jesus Christ, yeah, how we, how we manage that? And like you wake up as well, because when he got the bite, it was like just before first light, or it was oh, just getting like, sunrise. but it was so cold. Like, like I say, every morning you wake up and yeah. it's just, frost on everything it's just like how's he done that mm. in all of that water and there then obviously we're thinking right it's not just going to be <laughs> one little cart swimming around it set by itself no they're all here now we're going to mm. catch and we didn't we didn't catch anything else until the next morning did we yeah i think i really thought as i think we say on camera we're sat there doing a little piece of camera the sun's rising and in my head i'm just thinking any second yeah there these is. rods are going to go yeah. any second or we're going to see one splosh out like just waiting for it to go and I felt like that for like two three hours and then as the sun really came up and I was like where the fuck are they well wow, surely there's not just one by itself that's done that um in all that water in all that water <laughs> just one I just, I just can't sit, like no, can imagine them, imagine them going yeah. around in shoals of 100 200 mm. um now before we'd gone out I'd done my research Bolsena through my eyes you ever seen that no Bill Cotton watch it Bill Cotton. He's made a video, 2012, 2013. Um, it's called Bolsena Through My Eyes. Um, <laughs> which that phrase I did, was said a lot. I said it, I said it a lot. <laughs> um, and he goes out there and he just tears it apart. Tears it, absolutely. What do you mean by tear. tears it? What's he, what's he had? Just loads of 40 pounders. <laughs> like literally. Lo- loads yeah. of filmmakers. And he, went, on, and, that, he, yeah. and he went in February. No, I'm joking. It's a good favorite. Oh, he, went, he went prime time, May. Um, sun was up. It was beautiful. He actually fished on a spot not far from where we fished. Um, Bill's tree we saw, didn't we? There's a yeah. tree that he kept leaning up against in every shot, so we called it Bill's tree. Bill's tree. Bill's tree, good swim. Um, but, you know, he spoke about it a lot. You know, when they move in, they're not moving in ones and twos. They're no. moving in in their hundreds. So, yeah, again, going back to us, we thought, yes, there might be shoals of different size fish about. But we thought there can't be one. There must be a bucket load of them. Um, but I think at that point, I think that day I moved further up the You did. You bank went further down the bank. Because we just got in there. We went out. We placed rigs. 
when you've pinned them on your echo mm. uh the gps like we'd head out and i'd be like oh cool this is looks good nice big bank of weed or whatever we we'll use that under we'll get onto a bit more of the tactics in a bit but um found a found a nice clear spot i'm about to drop it and because you're just drifting about sometimes and you don't i look at the echo i'm like oh shit 10 meters that way is another rod like we've already got a rod there and i think we ended up being actually quite pinned yeah. in almost and if you think about them them lines going out mm. i think we decided like i'm just going to move up the up the bank a little bit so i went what 100 yards a couple of hundred yards up the bank and then basically started again with another fanning of of baits out that way um and that's when i guess we found them it was that night yeah yeah because it i think we we're doing your last one and it was actually the night before. Remember the night before when we were coming back in and I said, I think I've seen a carp. Mm. And then we concluded it was a rock. <laughs> <laughs> because I just saw the flash of it. Right. And then the rock started. But I was I remember at the time thinking, I saw that was a carp, I'm sure that was a carp. And then we were like, nah, it must have been must have been a rock, must have been a rock. And then the next day, the same thing happened. Yeah, so when we're coming into the shallows. Yeah, so just, when you're coming back. Yeah, yeah. just to the, the so the makeup was it was actually really shallow in the edge. Mm a metre deep for maybe 100, 150 yards. Mm. Very shallow. Like yeah, you could, you could wade out along with a shot wade of me out. wading out really far, isn't really it? Really long yeah. way when you needed a wick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you could Shit. wade out a long, long way, but then there was this big bank of bigger rocks, and after that it dropped down into twos, and then steady twos, uh-huh, threes, yeah. fours, five, six, and then after the rocks, that's when we were finding weed. So we were so concentrated on other side of them rocks, and because it was gin clear as well, so, so clear, black sand, you can see everything. That that shallow water was just, well, it's a write-off, there's nothing yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I'm going through it to get to wherever. Over those rocks, the weed starts, the boulders are there, looked good for it. Um, I've moved up and I've spent a lot of the day finding areas, H-blocking them, pinning them on the GPS, and then I've gone out later on to drop them. Yeah. By the time you've dropped one, 400 yards out, next one's 300 yards, next one, one's all the way over there. It's not that far out, but it's a long time. It's the last one we were coming back. Henry was in the boat with me. It's pitch black at this point, mm. and you've got to be careful of the um, big rocks. the motor on the rocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's he's driving. I'm holding my rod. He's driving. He's going, yeah, two metres, one and a half. Right, we're into one metre. So now I know that I've got to be careful because there's these big boulders that will come up. I need to ping my head torch on to say, oh, left, right, watch out. Right, come. Ping my head torch on and then we're just chatting away and I've just gone, there's a carp underneath us. And he just, boom, straight out. I was like, carp. And then suddenly it's like, another one, another one, another one. I was just going, we're going mental in the boat. They're yeah. Right here. They're yeah. here. They're, they're right here under 0.8 metres, one metre depth. That's like three foot, two foot, three foot, mate. It's like they were there. They were underneath us. Like, <laughs> the oh, would be so excited. But we hadn't seen them all day, all day. And, you know, Brad's had the drone up to get shots and that. Nothing. You would have seen a big shoulder cut and suddenly it's got dark. It's been dark for an hour, hour and a half. And it's Baltic at night. It's freezing. It? They're all there. They're all there. Like, not all there, but there was a lot of There's fish. a lot you, of them, yeah. Yeah, you just come past. There's two there. There's three over there. There's two, And they're all spread out, like, but they're, yeah, so we... Basically, all the two hours of me <laughs> placing all these rigs, I went, right, I'll go get all them in. Crank them in. <laughs> Turn them around. So I think, yeah, we just went straight back out. We just did a little Yui, and then I ended up just dropping it in a metre of water, handful of bait. We both caught one. We both caught one. But then, yeah, so I bought all my rods in, redid them, moved even further up the bank, and then I'm, I'm literally yeah, just... Yeah, you've got your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and Henry's gone, right, I'm going to go do the same. As you're driving back round, he's seen carp as well. But, you know... A lot of them, fifteen to twenty pounds, but we mm. see two or three thirty pound. I see one which was one, yeah. forty pounder. We see, we see right? a mirror as well. That's when I went you, with you had. I had, yeah, yeah. I went out with Roberto, and there was like this little peninsula. Well, it's like almost like a little point of rocks. Yeah. As, as opposed to them all being dotted out, there was like a point of them going out, and at the end there was like seven or eight, and they were probably the best group that I saw. Two of them were like thirty five plus, and there was one mirror, and Richard. Uh, was just like losing his mind. What, a mirror. At this, the mirror says, yeah, like, yeah. "Oh my god, there's a mirror." It's only like eighteen pounds, but he was like freaking out over it. Um, yeah, so obviously I'm getting well excited. I remember I got I woke Bastel up and was like, "I'm redropping all these rods. You need to come film it." And I was like whispering the whole time. I was because I was like, oh, "I just don't want to hear me." It's also shallow. And I remember he got to me going, "Why are we whispering?" <laughs> and I was like, "Because they're there. They're literally there." And just going through on the like the slowest setting it will go through. Just seeing them all and. I'm surprised we didn't catch more, mm. to be fair. But then, 
you know, so that night I had one, you had one. Mm. Um, I actually, weirdly, I didn't have one till sunrise. Oh, no, I'm thinking, yeah, this, they're that, mate, this yeah. is going to go any minute sort yeah. of thing. And um, I woke up and I'm like, oh, my God, I've blanked. Oh, my God. And then I've had this weird finicky take on my right-hand rod and I've glanced over and I can see a koi pew going out. I'm like, koi pew's gone through my line. So I'm walking up and the koi pew's like getting closer to me now and I'm seeing my rod going, da, 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 da. That's, that's not, the, it's not yeah. on the line. So I've like ran up there and I've lifted into it and this fish has gone, do, 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 like... Doesn't know what's going on. It's never yeah, been up, never sort been of up, thing. Yeah. Dolphin in and in. As I'm, as I'm playing, it's like flopping out and tail walking like a pike. I'm like, well, hey, hey. cool one. So, but then the next day we were going out. Yes, yeah, so I went out to that spot. Yeah. Because I hadn't just blindly dropped. You know, we tried to, we figured they were kind of grouped more around the rocks. So we were dropping them on the edge of rocks and that sort of thing. Go out to that spot. Not a single piece of bait. Not a single, and I'll be using... Bit of tiger nut slush, bit of small seed mix, yeah, just that. a small handful for a bite round, but not not a grain of hemp, nothing. It's just a li- little soft crater in the where mm. they've just smashed the lot. Everything. Go to the next spot, every single piece of flake and everything just nailed. Every, no, everything's there still. Oh my god! So they either come across it, come across it, came across it, yeah. or they didn't. That's what I figured. Mm. And like Henry said, I'm surprised we didn't get more bites, but like. Every morsel gone on that one. No, he not, left. Not a thing touched on that one. Any, so, no nuisance fish there. No like no. roach and bits Maybe, and bobs. There's chub. There was a lot of chub. You right. see a lot of chub going yeah. past, but that was it. But um, I yeah. had one spot where I know I didn't catch because I would um, I went out to, to do exactly what Dan had done. I had the one that was all cleared out is what I caught on one. One was completely fine. Everything left the same. Yeah. Another one. But to it, I was like, there's no bait there. I can't even see my hook bait. And then I see this drag line. <laughs> and where I've been tightening up my line. What you just dragged? I've just been dra- <laughs> dragged, dragged the dragged the lead away, and I've just dragged it about ten meters off the spot. I'm thinking, yeah, perfect. Beacons <laughs> off the spot. Yeah. But it's a good lesson because you, yeah. you you do think you're being so subtle with oh, it. Oh, right. yeah. yeah. right. You've got, Savage, yeah, you've got yeah. to be so careful with it. In your mm. butt. yeah, that was. I think I would have caught if uh, I didn't drag it off because there was not a single bit of bait left. Oh yeah, <laughs> no bait, line. just a drag line. I was like, "Wait, I can't even see my hook bait." And oh, I was like, buried, "What's that?" It's buried and under. It's just it. gone to like this rock where you can't even get to. It. I was like, oh, great. But um, yeah, that was uh, yeah, it was interesting. Completely different to how we had been fishing it the first night, and then second, suddenly, like I didn't even need the boat anymore. We're just wading out mm. during the day. I knew they weren't going to come in, but the second the second day, I was so much more confident because I was like. We disturbed them, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went back out with a bow. Henry then redid four rods, and you know, even though they didn't, they'd like sort of dart off because they just didn't know what was going on with a light in their face. But they were clearly disturbed a little bit. I put that it down to that's why I only nicked one right at the death sort of thing. And then they were gone for the day, and I figured if we can set those rods in the day, leave them there so they can just creep in unharassed Smash at them. night. We should have a few more bites. Um, and I think that's what we, I think the edit plays a bit trickery, but that's actually what we did. I think I actually had two bites that night, but I flopped them both because they were small. Small, what are we talking, that 10, 15 pound bracket? Yeah, 15 pound, no different to what we'd, we'd had. And one, one, like- one being the middle of the night, and because it was a bit, because it was so shallow, it was quite hard to get bank sticks in, yeah. and there was rocks everywhere, and I just didn't really want to sack it for the cameras. Because I'm 200 yards down yeah, the bank yeah, now yeah, yeah. I didn't want to have to walk all the way down and go boys come on I've got 15 pounder can you come and so I had that one then I flopped it and then I had another one again first light um, and I think I just let it go because it was small but to be fair it might be small but to get a bite I'd done it I'd done my bit and to find yeah. like something that worked not just one bite like yeah. consistently to find that group and that pattern and capitalise on it that's a mega bit of angling, mate. Yeah, so don't get me wrong. That sounds a bit like, well, oh, fucking flopped it. That first one, I lost my shit. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. could not be like, like, especially when I hooked into it, thinking it was a koi pew and it's flopped. I'm like, Brad had just woke up to come film me and he was stood on the that peninsula of rocks Henry was talking about. And he saw me and he was just like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm in! And he was just, yeah, I was so excited. Um, but then I'd done that there and I'd caught my wand. Yeah, so that's yeah, when it's... Yeah, yeah. No matter of the size, it was what eighteen pounds, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then that shot we had that morning, and we felt like champions. He had did, one, we? I had one. Yes, maybe we did play it down a little bit there because Henry was like, "Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't have more." 
we'd done it. Like we had, yes, yeah. you know, we went and met Yeah, up. we were gas, weren't we, that morning? We yeah. were so, so excited. Yeah. And oh, we went, so. and it's we, such a difficult trip, isn't it? I, wa- I really wanted a shot of me in the water with a carp and just that expanse behind me. And I got that. Yeah. So, yeah, really, really grateful for the trip. Really happy. And that was for me, that was job done. My next job was, I wanted the 20 kilo one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's where we saw this sort of, the difference, if you like, in terms of you guys as, as sort of anglers, because Brad has <laughs> lobbed the old drone up. Yeah, so that was that. To yeah. the next bay along, didn't yeah. he? Found a load. You went, nah, staying put for a big one. Mm. And you went, I'm going to go and club oh, it. I just could not go. Yeah, because I think that night before, I'd heard a load show. As in, as in, gone to bed. So I've left the boys. I've gone up to Dan's beach and I've sat on my bed chair and I've I made a brew and that. But I couldn't count to 10 seconds without hearing a show from 30 yards out to 300 yards out. And the whole, they were just dosh, 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 Biggins dosh. in amongst them. And there was, it's hard to say because, but yeah, yeah. Pig out of plane stuff. I think that's wicked hearing that, man. And so I'm thinking Dave maybe the big and maybe, yeah, there are smaller ones in it. Maybe the big ones are a bit further out. And so I think that's why the next day the decision was like, look, if Henry's going to go and fish for them, I'm going to just sit on my hands and hope for the best. I know he's going to go catch a load. I know he is because they're there. But I was just happy just sitting there and thinking, yeah, maybe tonight's the night where. But also, you knew they were little ones. Yeah. <laughs> and I knew that I wanted the 20 kit. I've yeah, caught my little yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I've done it. Where, and that's where our mindset's different. He's like, I just want to catch everything that's in front of me all the time. And I'm like, I've had my, I've had my bite. Now I need my, my prize. What was clear was when prize in, pig in the film, when you went across, mate, you were absolutely, it was like when you first stumbled across a venue and you like find it and you're getting that first all yeah. important bite. You were like that. You were so bushed. As soon as I saw them, you we were, were cooking breakfast, weren't we? Mate, mate, it was tough going. That's why. Yeah. Morale, yeah. even though we'd, you know, we'd had our little lift because we'd seen them in the edge. Like morale was low. We'd come a long way and we struck at this point. There's no film, mate. Really. There ain't a film, is there? No. We caught a couple of little commons. Yeah, if you'd have had one at the river and you'd have finished on those two little Name, commons, you'd get away. But, but, but at the moment, we were like... Yeah, scratching. And, you know, that's when the pressure kicks in and you think, fuck, have I fucked this up? Like, we were... At, th- at that point, morale would... We'd come back down to earth after catching a couple of fucking <laughs> cricket bats. And so seeing something like that, it was like go time again. Mm. And that's yeah. where the that's where the energy like, comes right, from. Right, who's coming with me? Who's coming with me? Brad, Bar, uh, Brad, Tone, right? Come on! I just loading everything as quickly as I can into these boats. Like, oh no, I had breakfast first. I remember Russell trying to cook me breakfast. I was, no, no, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's get it done. And um, we got over there, and I, I was just so excited because you'd stand up on some of these rocks and you'd look at and you would just see them on the edge of your polaroids. Yeah, you, I didn't even realize till I've just seen the edit how many carp really were there because there, there was loads and loads and loads but you just see the edge of them i think it's a bit like how far is that then? what are you talking they're not far out at all are they 40 yards, 40 yards maybe yes. yeah. but it's just i don't know where it's the glare but you just catch the edge of them every now and then mm. and then obviously there's a and you can see the they right. move through in shoals they weren't just sat yeah. there in a big ball they were just moving through so i'm guessing you were just seeing the odd one coming through and so we were like, right, okay. So, th- so we're watching them on the drone for a little bit. So we're like, okay, this is the patrol route. They're liking to hang out in that snag. So I was like, right, I'm going to put one on the edge of that snag and one on this patrol route. And yeah, same as what Dan was saying earlier. You're just wading out, placing it, throwing a bit of bait around it, bringing them back. And um, I remember I had a liner after about five minutes. It was like a proper like, beep, 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 beep. And you think, oh, I've been done. And so then you sat there thinking, mm. oh, what's going on? Like, are they being weird like they were earlier? Are they, are they just not really feeding? And then... You get that bite. And I remember just being sat out, stood in my waders, playing it, just the sun up, and just being like, this is it. This yeah. is wh- this is why I've come over to this spot to do this. And oh, it was just so much fun. And then the next just 24 hours was just right, place a rod, get a bite, place a rod, get a bite. And you were just talking about in there, weren't you? You were going, I, I, I couldn't do more than... No, nah, mate. I'd do- I honestly could do that for a week. I reckon. Yeah, fair play. Just one after another after another. It was just so much fun. And just seeing it all happen and then, ah, oh, it's just wicked. And we sat in this, like, in the middle of nowhere, me, uh, Brad and Tone. There's, like, some old fishing boat that had been overturned. You've got, like, a little stream running in. You've got, like, this little rocky peninsula. We just sat there, whacked our bed chairs up, 
just tie, literally tying rigs as quickly as I could. Yeah. Um, oh, it was wicked. It was so, so much fun. You smashed a few, didn't you, mate, to be fair? We caught loads. And we did, the biggest was 29 that we had. And mate, that's respectable out of there, isn't it? 29 pounds. It was a, it was is... a cool carp as well. It was, um, yeah, it was a really cool carp. But we did, I do think that there was the odd bigger one in there. And especially just when you put the drone up, you would just... Just on the edge, you felt like you saw one that was just slightly, mm. slightly bigger. And and Brad went over and literally stood on the snag ones. And he said, there's one in there that I think's a mid-30. But then when I caught that 29, he thought it was like a upper double. So I'm thinking, well, how big was that one that he mm. thought he saw then? So I think you would have eventually got through to them. But in terms of for 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 the bite to equal a big one, what's the best if you're going to get one bite, what's the chance of it being a big? And what Dan was doing was definitely the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, best, yeah. the best method. But I just, after what I saw, I just literally couldn't just sit there and wait any longer. I was so done with no, sitting and waiting. That's a bit of you, mate. I was it? done. I and was it's good. And, it. and that's why I think it's good. It's so good like that because without Henry doing that, there wouldn't have been a film. You know, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the fact that that was the ending to go and get them. But if we'd both gone and done that, it's kind of like all eggs in one basket because. That's where we spread ourselves, you know, we spread ourselves to different tactics, targeting different things. It, it could have worked really well for us. You know, we we had the ending in the end and then I was still going for hopefully a, a big end, but like... Unfinished business on there? Would you go back? That's too much. You say at the end, don't you? You go, I've definitely got unfinished business. I'd definitely go back. But thinking back, I'd love to go back, but life's short. Really, yeah, no. yeah, life is short. I, I would 100%, I've thought about it recently after watching the edit i would 100 percent do it the only problem is it's just fucking bull to get there yeah, yeah if it was yeah. at the north of italy Bolsena, and you could just stop in on your way to slovenia 100 percent i'd do it but because you've got to drive Top six down. hours mm. through italy and then come back up again and there's not loads of fishing on the way down that once you've gone past south of france there's not loads that really grabs my attention that i'd want to do that's why i'm not Super, super up for yeah. going again. At the time, we were like, yeah, definitely go back at a better time. Yeah, I always just looked back at that Bill Cotton film and just thought, imagine catching yeah, 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 the yeah. fish. He had him up to £50. Pound. Mm. I'm sure of it. So, and they've done a World Cup Classic on there. They've done they've World Cup Classics. Yeah. Real yes, big ones on there. Yeah, they've caught yeah, some yeah. massive carp in there. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I've not really heard of too many big ones. Roberto um, is sending me a load of images now. Is he there now? I'm he's fishing sure he's... Um, the lake that's... Um, on the border with Switzerland, it's a really, really big lake. Oh, right. It go it parts it in Switzerland, and then the rest of it goes down. It's, it's his home lake, and he's catching loads of like big forty pound commons on the moment. I'm looking at them, going, "That looks fucking sick. That looks really cool." Um, but yeah, there's a lot of fishing, mate. As there's a lot say, of fishing to do, isn't there? And logistically, it is a long old tow. But to be fair, not a lot of people can say they've caught a fish out of Bolsena at yeah, all. Yeah, and I think that's the thing to take from it all, really, because you know that was that was wrapped up. That was the end of the film. Yeah. Um, and I think, especially now looking back, we're a bit like, well, there's only small ones. But, you know, we went out there to have an adventure. We went out there to experience some different fishing. Sure, we didn't get the fish that we were thinking that we might. But it, it, in the end, in that moment, it didn't matter. Mm. It didn't matter. We were all fucking king of the world at that point. I remember get, ending it and going for that meal at the end. We've all had a bit of a van yeah. wash and that. And we were all sat there like, well done, boys. We... We yeah, fucking, we success, fucking did it. Done. We've come all this way. We've caught fish from we've we've caught fish from the impossible. Mm. At a horrible time of year to go and do it. Learn so much. Learn I think loads. I underestimate until you get back and really reflect on it. How much you learn from doing that? Like that was, and that's a big part of it. It's showing how the the Europeans fish mm. and learning from them. And that that's I think I underestimated until recently. Where I've reflected on the year. Like okay, yeah, fuck, we did learn shitloads like there's so much now that if i went and did that now i would be in such a better position mm. because of because of that yeah, trip. yeah of course mate um, and i think it's yeah it's one of them the lessons to be had you don't have to catch a big fish for it to be a success you know as long as you're out there having an adventure and you're enjoying yourself and you're enjoying your fishing who cares really oh, and, mate, well actually get, we care if yeah. the viewers don't like yeah. it but yeah, yeah. And, bast, and get bastled on the edit like i said at the start and then Everyone really will matter. like it, it and you saw it. Sick, yeah. And you can infinitely travel the globe yeah. on the old Nash books. Yeah. But what I liked is the fact that, like, you boys went out there, you saw the like dynamic between you guys, you did different venues and different fishing. And a lot of the content you see out of Italy has been Parker del Brenta and that type of fishing, which 
it's brilliant, but it's it's sort of seen. Whereas there wasn't really anything too reminiscent of that in terms of the venues selected, the time of year you went out, and Bolsena especially was completely different. So I liked it in that regard that it was so different, and it gives you a different outlook and aspects on Italian fishing, which was part of the mm. brief. Really, it's very mm. sort of neat. So I think you guys did a cracker job to catch one on Bolsena. I'd have been absolutely buzzing with, yeah. regardless of how big. That's an absolute <clears> result because there's been lots of trips that have been out there and, and been unsuccessful. So fair play to you. Yeah, a special carp. Next one. You've got so you've got one in a can, another one in a can, another one in the oh, can, yeah. and that's got a few more bigger fish in it. Yeah, that was a, that went a bit better. That mm. the next so the next episode will be out in I think August, but summer at some point, Ooh, and that yeah. is uh, it's got Germany. the most impressive fish I've ever seen in it. I'd say. Oh, okay. Rosie Biggins not in it. I'm not seeing it. Um, Biggin out of Spain again. <laughs> you put that back in. That's not oh, sorry, <laughs> second second most impressive. <laughs> there we uh, go. I, I, I'd but, put that as a higher, yeah. as a more impressive than. Um, You'd yeah, put that more impressive, the fish that... I know the fish what, you're talking the, about. The fish that gets caught in the next one is yeah, just... Blew my mind It's time. mental. That's I've never seen you lose your head as much as waking me up to tell Swaves me what you happened. Swaves you uh, nah, I think no, but you're like, li- sort li- of li- yeah, Live. Live, You've seen me yeah. like, like, I, like I said to you earlier on today, I yeah, lost yeah. my shit. I just couldn't... I was walking around this beach with a fish around, holding my head going, I can't... At 1 a.m. going, I cannot yeah. believe this has happened. And he didn't I even cannot it. believe this has happened. Yeah, yeah. Neither of you caught it. Yeah, and neither of us caught it. And still, I'm just like it was just mental. Ah, oh, it's madness. Yeah. But that's another story. That's another podcast. That's um, Germany. We will go to next. Oh, wait for Germany, and then you got a couple to film this year, haven't you? Yeah, guys? and if those yeah. both go terrible, we won't go and film these ones. <laughs> It'll still well, go no, fishing. Actually, we've got to get the first. Yeah, one. there you go. It'll still go fishing. Though. Well, can I still go and put on the work? <laughs> oh, I've yeah. got them booked in my uh, total carp calendar. I'll vlog it. <laughs> Of the car- vlog it. Carpology vlog. I'll put it on my YouTube channel. Subscribe, everyone. Oh, my God. Shameless <laughs> plugs. Uh, on that note, boys, thank you for coming in. Make sure you guys check out um, Continent. Not oh, isn't it? What is it? Continental Connection. Have you even I watched it? Yeah. I have watched. I've just relayed <laughs> various parts of the film. I keep thinking it's Carping Connections, but no, it's that's a terrible name. Why would you call it Why that? Why would you call it that? Oh, sorry. sorry, go and listen to uh, and watch Henry Lennon's Continental, Continental Connections. Connections. Got to get Henry Lennon's in yeah. there. Um, I'll see you soon with another Nash Off Podcast. Until then, Dan, Henry, thank you very much, chaps. Cheers, Cheers mate.